So you guys find yourselves in uh, the lizard folk lair after meeting with uh, Queen Okathent. Um, and you, after the meeting, you kind of have some time to get to know some of the locals in the lair. Um, the lair itself is sort of built into this uh, promontory outcropping on the coast. Uh, it's sort of half finished. It's been a deserted ruin for generations, probably a hundred years. So some of the walls have crumbled in that time, and tribes of other primitive humanoids had probably been living in it in the interim time. Um, some of the walls are just the natural formation of the promontory. Uh, some of it is sort of rough mortared, um, uh, cut stone, uh, sea stones. And then some of it is just propped up with uh, shark skins and uh, other animal skins uh, to keep out the elements. Um, everybody seems to be reacting well to you. And um, over time, Elder Green sort of discovers just by hearing the conversations in Draconic that there are a few lizard folk that do speak common uh, in the lair. That the lair sort of functions um, as a small town in a tight space. And that um, everybody was really appreciative of the way you all interacted with the hatchling lizard folk, the children. Um, that sort of followed you around and you all kind of gave gifts to. And um, there, you kind of pick up the fact that they were hoping that you would be friendly and that you would offer some aid, but that the some of the uh, lizard folk in the lair were suspicious and didn't really think that you could put up much of a fight um, against what you have now discovered is the enemy you encountered on your way to the lair those fish-faced demons to wagon. Right. So you also learn that in the lair, at the same time as that you've been spending time there, um, there are emissaries from other tribes also spending time there. Um, there's a delegation of Lokatha, which are um, sort of fish warriors. Um, uh, Gilfin and Jacopo would know what they look like. And I think I got an image here for you. Um, there's also merfolk. That's your kind of typical um, human upper torso and then, uh, you know, Little Mermaid style fish tail. Mm -hmm. There are also uh, koalinth, which you would know Jacopo and Gilfin to be goblins of the oceans. Ah. And they're sometimes known to, you know, raid uh, human settlements as well because they, they behave just like other types of goblins. So, um,. So from spending time hanging around, you kind of get the feeling that the common po folk are impressed with your interaction with the kids, and that's kind of what won their hearts. The queen, sort of the same thing, but she was um, also hoping uh, to see what you have to offer. And then um, it was her minister Sarov's idea to in actually send a letter to invite the people of Salt Marsh uh, to join in an alliance with them. So here's the queen. And her minister. So you basically have the makings of a town here. Um, and you also know that they're keeping a Sahuag in prison somewhere. So what would you guys like to do? Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Last week you said that the, the many-toothed god is the, Sw the Swahagan or also fear him as well. Uh, this, yeah, you would think that... So actually the problem for these people is... <clears throat> is that they're trying to draw these alliances and they're trying to stockpile weapons mm -hmm. and make battle plans against a threat that's coming from the ocean. But kind of on their back sides here, um, they have a, a primitive, what they would consider as a god, like a spirit of the swamps that inhabits this monstrous crocodile alligator type thing. Which, even though they may, it seems like they, they may respect it. Yes, they, they worship but, it. Right. Right. The way so, that the uh, tribesmen might have worshipped King Kong, they still know King Kong will eat them. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. So that's the nature of this thing. And they dare not, um, they, they've actually, they've decided against the shaman's um, wishes to try and like fight it, at least in self-defense. And uh, you learn that a tooth was taken from um, Thousand Teeth, the Devourer. And so they know that he's currently sulking in his lair. Word has gotten back to the lizard folk lair that the Thousand Teeth 
they know exactly where he is. He was the Thousand okay. Teeth Act 2. Now he's the Thousand Teeth Devourer Act 3. The devourer, he just yes. fucking ranked up. <laughs> he leveled up too. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds to me like there's kind of a celebration going on. Everybody's kind of just mingling and stuff. Um, they, yes, everyone's sort of cautiously optimistic. They're just happy um, that you all came in peace in their time of need. Yeah, Gilfin's hanging out with some lizard folk who do not speak common at all. He's telling them stories uh, C-3PO style where he's like, wee, boop, boop, you know, like that kind of <laughs> shit. And he and he's like, Jackabo, look at here. It's my friend Cold Slither. Yeah, this guy's great. Cold Slither. I've been trying to show Cold Slither what a spear is like because we need spears. Would Cold Slither understand if I'm kind of like taking a stick and saying, do you have any spears? Uh, yeah, he sort of gets up from his stool and leaves the room, and the others uh, around him uh, at the table with you are sort of like uh, gesturing that it's okay to just continue and that everything's fine. And then <laughs> the then the, the witch told the guy in the boat, go away and never come back. Boom, and he, a big loud voice, whip, 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 wee, woo. <laughs> is, it, is it necessary for you to make those uh, those noises when you're talking to them? I don't they, know if they can they... understand words or sounds. I just, they seem to enjoy it. At least the little ones do. Too right. They do look like they're enjoying it for a minute. They do not enjoy it. <laughs> what's uh, what's Elder Green uh, interested in, sort of in the lair? Um, I believe that Elder Green is just going to be um, kind of discussing the thousand teeth because it sounds fascinating to him and he really um though he doesn't worship other people's gods he appreciates them for, as lesser beings <laughs> um so he's probably just fascinated with the th concept of the thousand teeth and he's trying to learn more about it so he's sort of having like religious discussions with the common folk and stuff like that yeah all right go ahead and roll 1d6 all right sure they're enjoying all that religious talk. That's all they want to talk about. We're going to talk sports. I got a five. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and roll a um, persuasion check. And okay. um, on, against the DC of uh, 20 my, uh, sorry, sorry, against a DC of 10. You said persuasion, right? Yep. It's 11. 11, okay. So uh, five of the lizard folk commoners are actually, they agree that their thousand teeth of devourer shares a lot in common um, with the great old one, uh, Cthulhu. And they're sort of interested in the fact that it might be the same aspect of the same entity. And uh, they are willing to go through your rituals to become converts. Oh! <laughs> that makes Elder Green so happy. <laughs> And uh, I hear him squeal from over there, and I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, that can never mean anything good. And, so, uh, Jacopo, what are you engaging in in the lizard folk layer? I feel like uh, Jacopo is sort of a monster hunt. He's got that book that he uh, keeps notes on ships and uh, monster logs and stuff like that of things that he may encounter. Um, he's trying to maybe ask any uh, English speaking um, or sorry common speaking uh, like hunter lizards if they uh, can d describe anything at all about the, 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 the god that we're about to face just to try and uh, put it in his log now I, that doesn't have to be anything mechanical but I just, just you know just that's the kind of thing he would be doing probably well some of the interesting notes maybe that you've learned about the lizard folk are that they the ones that do speak common um, sort of translate their draconian names into something descriptive about them. So maybe the strongest warrior, his name means war uh, in common. Mm -hmm. Or if a guy who likes to fight with an axe, uh, his name would be axe translated from draconian. Um, that's the way they decide to describe themselves. Okay. Um, you also would gain a uh, knowledge of the Hool Marshes so okay. that you wouldn't you and your party would never have to treat the terrain 
um, as difficult uh, while you're traveling through the marshes for any reason. Okay. Um, and you'll also know, be able to pinpoint the location of Thousand Teeth Slayer without getting lost. Okay. That sounds good. That kind of pairs well with my ranger stuff anyway. That, like he can, he can like apply his survival skills to what they're telling him to prepare for the trip. Because he wants to try and be a good guide for his companions. And as uh, kind of everybody's holding court with their individual groups, um, uh, Gilfin, one of the, uh, the oh, sorry, one, the lizard folk that got up from your table returns. Cold Slither, he's back. Cold Slither is holding a. <laughs> he's holding holding a. <laughs> <laughs> he's holding a spear. Um. Uh, with a what looks to be a gigantic foot long tooth uh, fashioned to the end of it as the spearhead and it's sort of um, you know forged uh, to this um, this spear haft that looks like it's been in a lot of battles it's marked from sword strikes and it's got all sorts of uh, draconic runes carved in it but yet it seems to have survived all the encounters that it's been in Maybe except for perhaps the spearhead, uh, which has now been added as a foot-long, um, sort of rotted, yellowish, gigantic tooth. And he presents it to you, and it's a plus-one spear uh, fashioned from the tooth of Thousand Tooth, the Devourer. What kind of weapons do these lizard folks seem to be carrying? Uh, they have axes, clubs, and spears, primarily. So... When he hands Gilfin the spear, Gilfin um, pulls out. He, I have an extra short sword. This was taken from a human king. And I present him this little short sword. And uh, Cold Slither it accepts it uh, gr uh, gratefully. You can. He's obviously excited and then um, honored. And he cur uh, he scurries back the way he came, uh, assuming assumedly to the armory. Uh, nobody here's got a short sword. He's going to be the talk of the town. Right. That's the best steel that he's probably ever handled. That's good looking wood on the shaft of that there. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, your mind goes right in the gutter. What? Listen. No, I, I was thinking about the tooth. Sure, sure. Listen, I'm a carpenter. I can tell it's a nice little, you know, it might look primitive, but it, look at how many times it's been slashed and it hasn't broken. What do you want from me, Jackabo? I'm drinking some of this lizard brew. This stuff is great. Have you tried it? Uh, is it that green stuff? Yeah. I was afraid to. Hey, look, it, it comes out the same way it goes in, the same color. It's fine. <laughs> Well, yeah. um, Elder Green, your uh, your five followers have sort of introduced themselves. Okay. Um, you've got uh, a follower named Bashra, which is a sort of crocodilian-looking lizard folk who kind of stinks. Um, <laughs> he walks so hunched over that his kind of hands drag on the ground, and his uh, scales are kind of moldy. Okay. Uh, you know that his name translates into animal. Um, you also have uh, Kosch, who is uh, very tiny, but ha it, what is like fascinated with you, kind of stares at you, big-eyed. Um, he's got a small person with small, sharp claws and teeth. And then you've got Merrick, who is uh, super cheerful, but doesn't really understand humor. And laughs at all kinds of inappropriate things. <laughs> and Merrick's name translates into song. Uh, you've also kind of got like a, a sort of nasty, um, cruel, <laughs> scarred looking uh, lizard folk who's clearly been in all kinds of battles. And he's covered in terrible burn scars, but he's just so... He, he, everything he says seems kind of hateful. His name is Valignan. And then your last one is named Litrix, who's a female, um, and is decorated in uh, small furred animals and bones 
um, kind of fashioned into jewelry. And uh, she also wears uh, a full set of uh, stolen plate armor. Jack, well, you see the way he's looking at that one? He sees green. And her name is what? <laughs> Litrix, which translates Litrix. into armor. Okay. I drink green well, stuff. Well, they seem like they'll stuff. fit right in. Oh, hey, Jack Bow, them robes are uh, rising. They worship green gods. They wear green. I mean, I'm just going to start calling them the green people. Cthulhu be praised. You know, I thought this trip would be a waste of time, but all of these new converts to the church has really bolstered my spirits. Well, are these converts going to help us fight the Thousand Tooth Devourer? No, that would put them in danger, and I would never do anything to endanger the Look members this guy. of my cult, I mean congregation. This one guy, standing there, looks like he's fought more battles than the three of us combined. He's a tough looking block, isn't he? He scares the shit out of me. And it's green shit. Yeah. Valingen green is shit. kind at heart. I'm Blink sorry. sort of uh, hisses and snarls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Just oh, yeah. be happy you can't understand that, Gilfin. Oh, I understand that. <clears throat> Was he speaking condescendingly to us? <laughs> he wants to come fight. That's what it is. Look at him. Looks like he's seen a lot of action out here in the swamp. Fighting them fish folk. Maybe we ought to go and see if we can talk to that fish folk. Well, we should try maybe to get he's, us. Maybe he's one of the ones that attacked us on the river, eh? Well, it's possible. We need to try to find out as much as we can about this Thousand Tooth Devourer. We don't want to go in blind. <clears throat> well, I've been studying a little bit. I mean, I know how to find it. Yeah, but how to and, fight uh, it. Well, see us here, Spear? Like... Let's keep our distance. Most creatures have their heart around the same place. You just put a sharp object right through it. Some of them were born without a heart. Yeah, you would have learned that the uh, the, the lizard folk that have skirmished with it have found that um, it can close long distances with great speed. Great. Um, that it fights ferociously. Wonderful. Um, and ruthlessly. Stupendous. Yeah, uh, it's of monstrous proportion, and they have... They've, I mean, it's given them trouble for a reason. They don't really know. If they knew how to beat it, they probably would have. Yeah. There's enough of them. Um, but, you know, they they worship it, and the tactics that they have used against it haven't really worked. A village cannot defeat this creature. The three of us are going to go at it. Well, uh, no offense. But come down here so any of the common ones can't hear me. But they're using bones and fish teeth to fight. A giant monster. We've got man-made steel and modern weapons. Perhaps we'll have a bit more luck, don't you think? Yeah, this boat trip's been nothing if not easy going. We almost died. <laughs> yeah, it's a day in the life. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we should go talk to that those fish folk. See what's up. Yeah, he's in a cell. Maybe we can get uh, Elder Green to take to get his uh, our new followers to show us where he is. Okay, I'll ask them. Oh, Elder Green, uh... they'll. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I will ask Mirik. I will say, uh, <laughs> which means, uh, can you take us to the fish folk? <laughs> And she replies in Draconic. Oh, She's like, oh, yeah, we, we can totally go down there. Uh, they'll probably kill us. <laughs> <laughs> she is so funny. <laughs> it didn't seem funny. That, that didn't seem funny at all. Yeah, they uh, they definitely don't want anybody around that thing. First of all, it's dangerous. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Man, they've killed so many of us. <laughs> oh. That's, that's, that's why they call you Song. <laughs> that okay. is why they call me Song. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that one's off a rocker. 
Ah, she seems pretty That's happy. That's all to in me. Iconic, so, uh, she seems pretty actually, happy in her mannerisms. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have no idea what she's saying, but she's nope. laughing or making some sort yeah, of you weird can, noise. So, right. You have no clue. <laughs> I'm enthralled by her. I can almost see what Elder Green sees in her. All scaly and <laughs> loincloth-ic. There goes your mind again, mate. All right, well, um, when, when you and I watched stayed in that lighthouse for three months, and you about lost your mind with that kind of talk. Never mind. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> it was a long story. I killed a seagull. He got mad. I we was drunk. Around I was drunk most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It inspired me to make a new cologne, though. It's called Boozy Kerosene. I call that an alcoholic sabbatical, where I drink so much I just kind of forget a three-month period. It helps me get through the tough times. When we ran out of booze, he started drinking the lamp fluid. Al alcoholic uh, hibernation, you could call it. <laughs> well, so. Merrick has told me that many of the uh, sea creature things have been murdering them and... That Wait. they might kill us if we go and visit them. The sea creature people who are visiting this village are murdering them? Yeah, they're horrible. Well, that is shitty. I mean, Cold <laughs> Slither, how can he sleep at night? Probably his kids are threatened by these <laughs> fish people in the village. How, why would they let him in the village, Elder Green? Just to kill They're prisoners, their right? Yeah, one of these, uh, they have captured one of the Sawagin. Oh, um, well. And the that's others. what you guys want to do. You want to visit the visit. captured Sohuagin, right? Right. We want to talk oh, they to can't him. kill us if they're chained up. Oh, that's even better. Well, they will take us to see him if you want. Right. Maybe we can um, see if it's one of the ones that attacked us. Yeah, give him the old Bam. good cop, bad cop routine, whatever a cop is. So what do you guys want to do? We want to go talk to the fishman that's in their cell. Or All right, so Elder, or... Elder Green, you're going to try and convince one of your followers to lead you down there? Yes. So, Valignant is, uh, s sort of behaves suspiciously when you start, um, talking about that. Uh, but Merrick is sort of cheerfully leering, uh, leading you on the way with, uh, Kosh and Litrix and Beshra, just kind of following behind you. Um, you can kind of tell that the common folk, uh, treat them as outcasts already. <laughs> and they... Oh. And they really don't like, um... They they can they know the direction that you guys are headed, and uh, you sort of get sort of a larger gathering. And the regular commoners are more uneasy about the, uh, where you're going than than even your own followers. Well, Gilfin thinks that them looking at him is them looking at us more like, hey, look how cool they are. Look at that. Look at that group of badass, you know, people walking down the street. So he thinks the exact opposite of what you just explained. But he does not think that it looks like a good behavior, and he oh, says, uh, "Are you sure? Uh, are you sure it's all right to follow Jar Jar Binks down there into the dark?" It's almost definitely not all right. Are you sure these people seem to look at us pretty excited? Like, look at the way they well, look mean, at your group of people with such. We don't. Ha I don't want to make eyes. I don't want to make them angry. Are they all right with this? I mean, I'm just trying to. One of the larger I lizard folk that... sort of comes around the corner and he's speaking in Draconic. He's like, Holt, what brings you here? Oh, uh... Oh, I don't know. Do I... He's speak speaking in Draconic. Draconic. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. So Sorry. I'm going to say, um... Oh, know. we just came to see the prisoner. Yes, you would need to be accompanied by Sauriv or the Queen herself. Okay. Um... Right. Uh... Well... What business do you have with a prisoner? Um, well, we were attacked by Swahajin on the way here, and we wanted to see if he maybe knew them. Ah, so you are not its allies. Absolutely not. I should have known that you heroes would have been attacked by these creatures. <clears throat> but still, you must have the queen in your presence to speak with it. That cannot... makes perfect sense. I am so sorry for that. Um, and I'm just gonna tell, uh, Jacobo and Gilfin what they have told me. He sort of stamps his, stamps his, uh, stamps his spear on the ground and, and, uh, backs away and walks away he came. I'm pretty I'm... sure your followers should have told us that, Elder Green. Why don't you take a demotion out of one of them or something? Take a point yeah, away. Do do? <clears throat> don't we get flogged or something? Yeah, initiation. 
We do get flogged when we do bad things, right? I no, mean, we don't, don't get flogged. It's his his group of kids get flogged. I got flogged. <laughs> you want to be flogged? I, you don't have follower. to be flogged unless you want to. Well, you are a follower, I guess, Jack <laughs> Those bastards back there at the house told me that I had to get flogged to be one of them. Oh, those kinky guys will tell you anything. <laughs> you mean to tell me that I let that beasted? Damn it! Yeah, that was Elder Wilcox. <laughs> oh, oh, That's Wilcox. Typical Wilcox. <laughs> typical Wilcox. <laughs> you can take an inspiration. Well, I get my hands on that Wilcox. This just took a turn. <laughs> uh, you know what? I can't. I, all right. I'll, I'm sorry I'm out of character, but I can imagine months from now we're going to be talking about Will Cox in so many negative ways <laughs> from here forth. He's going to be the we butt of every joke. Have, yeah. We now have a Gary. <laughs> yeah, it's horny, it's horny Elder Will Cox. Will Cox said, <laughs> You must be punished for this insolence. Assume the position. <laughs> so I, I, all I did was drop my sandwich. <laughs> I mean, who am I to question the grind, old one? Uh, okay, well, we're not going to fucking go down there if, um, if, that's, if they say no. I just was thinking that it might be helpful. <clears throat> Didn't know if it um, was a story hook right in the hip. And <laughs> I do learn that the year, uh, welcome to visit with the ambassadors from the coalition. Um, I was going to say that. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can find some of those other people to party and get some more of that green drink. Yeah, so let's, um, let's uh, head on over there and maybe mingle with some of them. I mean, the more friends we make, the happier they're going to be back at Salt Marsh, right? We're making peace treaties. Look at us. We're ambassadors. We're in bastards. Well, that, that might right? be what Wilcox called you, but. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. That Wilcox. So there's the Lokatha, the Koalinth, um, and the Merfolk um, ambassadors that you could visit with. Um, you would. Um, you find that the lizard folk are generous with their food and drink, so they're um, supplying you with a, a couple days' journey um, through the marshes. Um, they also give you the pick of their weapons, um, but like I said, that consists of axes, maces, and spears in general. And of course, they already offered you um, the spear made from the, the, the tooth of a uh, thousand tooth of crocodile. Um, they also outfit you with um, healing potions. Ooh. Uh, two each. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> that, that does not uh, sound like it's going to be a good day. But they're, uh, what are they, the regular level healing potions, so. Um, what's the basic nice ones, 2d4 plus 2 or something like that? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. A nice little collection of those going. That's six healing potions. Holy shit. Me too. So this uh, this cabal of people, they're just, they're just mingling, having kind of a celebration. What are they speaking? Are they speaking... Uh, yeah, about one in every ten of them speaks common. Everybody else speaks draconic. Well, I have an interest in the merfolk. I've heard oh, okay. Tale. I've heard tale of them, and I've never seen one before. Ah, uh, you've seen one, you've seen them all. They're about the same. They're fascinating to me. So a few of the new uh, lizard folk elders lead you to Area 52 on the map. It's sort of a, a big cavern, um, a little bit down a sloping part of the of the fort uh, the uh, the fortress that the lizard folk are sort of in the process of removing into mm -hmm. and uh, you find a series of pools um, one of which looks to lead out to the hidden cove uh, that you had an option to sail uh, the Delgado into uh, area 52 sounds like super secret kind of stuff let's go check it out and uh, yes here's where you find a uh, little um, uh, uh, it's sort of like it's sort of like um, dockside uh, shanties set up um, for the visiting delegates from the other invited races. Um, but the Lokatha and the uh, Merfolk uh, spend all their time in the pool and not inside their um, more like land-based cabin. And then the Koalinth are taken up in their cabin. 
Dare I suggest we split up and mingle? Sounds good to me. I'd like to mingle with some of them. So, uh, you have a preferred person to speak with, Elder Green? No. <laughs> well, well, I'll go talk to the Lakara then. So you wander over to the Lokatha pool, and Lokatha, it's sort yes. of it, 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 <laughs> it's sort of a clear water pool uh, covered with uh, uh, the floor of the pool is sort of covered with weeds. Um, there's a stone path leading to the pool, uh, a, a short path from the the little shanty um, the shanty structures, and there are four Lokatha. Uh, sort of huddled around one of a larger size, and uh, they are all, um, they all have, uh, they're all surrounded by five swimming giant eels that sort of circle out to the pool, back to the group of Lokatha, kind of coming back and forth, look, look playfully, but keeping an eye on them. Uh, greetings. And they sort of, they answer back uh, in common, surprisingly, and say, greetings to you. Do they speak aquatic? They do speak aquatic. Then I respond uh, in aquatic back to them, you know. But I kind of do it because I don't want Elder Green or uh, Jack Bo to know I speak it. Okay. Uh, they go, ah, they look at you surprised and they're sort of watery aquatic back to you. Oh, uh, you speak our tongue. Ah, I am of the sea too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what brings you to this coalition? We were invited. This lizard clan has been harassed by the Sawagan, who have harassed us. And uh, we have suffered many great losses at their terrible hands. We've agreed that the best thing we can do is unite with the other harassed tribes and fight against our enemy. Are the Sawagan, um, are they attacking or are they uh, making slaves of your people or are they just trying to take territory? I'm trying to understand the threat other than them attacking your peaceful race. They are doing all such things. Uh, they seem to act with chaotic, reckless abandon. They've destroyed entire, uh, civ uh, they've uh, destroyed entire settlements uh, further in the depths, and they've also uh, harassed trade routes from our shoreline uh, enclaves. Have you tried to reach out to the people of Saltmarsh? We thought that the people of Saltmarsh could not offer as much aid as most of these battles have taken place beneath the waves. We are all of the same world. Some of us live above the water, some below, but we are all on the same planet. Yes, the Minister of the Lizard Folk has made a similar argument, and we now are beginning to agree. This threat against you could very easily become a threat against the human people of Saltmarsh. What's to stop these Walhegan as they gain power? They seem to have a divine presence on their side. They fight with recklessness. Um, that they've often had before, but they seem more deadly, like something is giving them strength. Some kind of leader or some kind of power? We don't know, and we hope not to find out. Well, I aim to find out, so we can take care of this problem once and for all. And then we wish you luck. And I kind of small talk them if the other boys want to kick in wherever they're at. Okay. Um... I can go next if you want. Um, which uh, pool are the, the merfolk hanging out in? The 52 uh, area? 52, yep. <clears throat> so sort of deeper back in the cavern there. Um, I'm just going to tag along with Jack. Okay. Is there a uh, like a little way to go out to them without or swimming? Or do I, is there a You dinghy? can, uh, there's a, there, again, there's a, a footpath. Um, sort okay, of, so I can walk uh, right out to them. Yep, there's a footpath, so you could fall, you know, or you know, if you can't, if you want to, you could get in the pool and swim. Uh, but you, he's, um, he, he's going to walk along the path to them. He's almost, it's almost like a kid going to a zoo rather than him just going like, hey, guys, let's hang out. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Uh, so he's going to approach curiously and almost like, um, imagine if uh, it's almost like a, uh, like, like the first time the hobbits saw the elves in the woods. You know what I mean? Yes. That's how. That's how. That's how Jack is. That's his mentality. It's not Fenrir trying to be a pervert. Oh, look, look, look at the mermaids. He's he's like fascinated by the the fact that there's merfolk here. So he's an approach, almost yeah, timidly, they're... but also kind of like curiously. Yeah, they're definitely more rare, and you kind of come upon them engaged in a sort of a similar um, uh, uh, situation. They're 
They're about you know, their chest up uh, in the water. There's a large male and three small, smaller females, um, and they're they're dressed for war. Uh, hello. Do any of you speak my tongue? Hell yes, we speak the common tongue of the land folk. Uh, it's an honor to meet you. I, I must say, I, I've only heard legends of your folk. I've heard of your beauty and that you can sing and that sailors sometimes, well, they, they are so in, in, engaged by your singing that they sometimes fall to their deaths in the, in the water because it's so beautiful that there. Those stories did you no justice at all. You are more fair and glorious than I imagined. Well, well met to you, land man. And the sort of the three, <clears throat> the three um, females sort of like, huh, normally we would find your interest in us amusing, but this is not time for, for jests and flirts. No. I hear that uh, all of you have gathered here to face this common enemy. I, pr I fought some of them on the way here. They attacked my boat. Uh, yeah, another one of the females is like, yes, we've long kept the land folk safe. Ferocious enemy. Listen, uh, is there anything that you can tell me about them that might help me in the future that I would know something about? Is there anything that they dislike? Weaknesses or, or tactics that you use against them that would give me an advantage if I ever get surprised by them again? These devils have no weaknesses. We would not be seeking the help of the pathetic Locatha or the evil Coalinth if they had weaknesses that we could exploit. I will tell you this. Once they see you bleed, they will descend on you in packs and they will not stop until you are all dead. Oh, just like a shark. Yes, they be. And they are friends with the sharks of the sea. They can command them. Well, that right there is, is enough information you have greatly helped me. I hope we have, Landman, and I hope you can help us in return. I will endeavor to do my best, O oh, people of the sea. If you would do me one great favor, if you, if you will, before I go. I design boats and crafts that travel through the water, and I, I am always trying to learn from the creatures of the sea since you so graciously moved through the water with ease, your natural bodies, would you do me the honor of showing me one of your fins and how you swim? This is an insulting request. You wish to stare at us as if we are specimens? We know nothing of your boats, land men. We move through the sea on our own so easily. I do apologize. I mean no offense. I only wish to see these see your your wonderful uh, abilities that i have only heard in legend and one of the females is like one wonders if they are even worth saving we work so hard to protect them they are foul and primitive like these other lizard folk well i do apologize i sorry i asked i will leave you then come on Nelda. i don't want to make them out any more anger than I apparently already eat. Nice going, Brother Blackthorn. You offended the mer ladies. Totally well, threw off those vibes I was putting out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just standing behind him, posing the whole time. Just waiting for somebody up. to comment. Ah, those guys told me some great fishing holes. Those guys know the best places to fish. Jack Bo, you did good. Did you talk to the merfolk? Elder Green, you talked to those nasty, evil-looking guys yet? No. Uh, well, um, <laughs> I'll talk to uh, the merfolk over there, and, uh, well, uh, well, it did go too well. Ah, uh, you probably called them merfolk. They prefer to be called mer people. <laughs> well... <laughs> No matter what I did, it made them angry at me. Yeah. There's other merfolk in the sea, buddy. Don't worry. Well, I don't think that they'll be taking a liking to me anytime soon. No, merfolk are famously stuck up. 
Are they well, stuck I know up that as soon? Never even listen to my sermons when I stick my head in the water and shout them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so are we gonna talk to these rough and tumble guys, or are we just gonna? Well, I think I've made enough people angry for one night. <laughs> well, I was talking to those guys over there, and they told me that the uh, Sohegan might be being controlled or empowered by some form of uh, vestige or a commander of sorts. Something has bolstered their strength and uh, that's why they're posing such a danger nowadays more so than before well at least we've got the power of Cthulhu on our side right well that's right <laughs> we'll be the high right. priest of the great old ones will provide us with plenty of strength to defeat this Thousand teeth. Yeah. Well, boys, <laughs> that Please, sounds good. Only a thousand. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe just in case, Jacobo, I can get that Mariner's armor from you. Maybe, maybe put it on. Oh. Too right, mate. It's in the pick here. No, just in case you. Cthulhu doesn't <coughs> smile upon a non-elder. While you're chatting, some of the uh, the hatchlings sort of run in and run around and sort of shout at each other and chase each other. You know, obviously trying to get your attention like, you know, kids do uh, whenever there's somebody they're interested in around. And some of the older lizard folk are chasing after them. And uh, But they kind of linger around, too. Like, everybody's sort of looking at you all, you know, with a mixture of kind of awe and anticipation. Okay. Um, you know, I'll give out a couple of good berries to the kids as they run around doing that. And they sort of scamper off with their treats to go um, chase after each other um, and, and tease some of the kids that didn't end up with a good berry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Finally, I can make more than 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll head out. To, uh, I'm going to. They've provided us with a room for the evening. To, yes, to they've got in. you guys quarters for the evening. Um, it's sort of just one room uh, and, you know, sort of the many chambered layer. Um, but you know, it's a bare floor, bare walls. Um, they didn't even really, they don't have a place for you to put anything, but there's a, you know, uh, they provide you with meals and then you can, you know, use that for like a chamber pot, I guess, if you need it. Right. Yeah. He'll just set up a little camp for himself in there and, um, and start tinkering with his crossbows because he's got things to do to them. Okay. Well, as we sit in there, uh, did you want to do anything, Elder Green? No, I'm ready to kill a god. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to sit and talk to Jacobo then, <laughs> why he's prepared to kill a god. Okay. Jacobo, uh, you ever fight any kind of, well, uh, uh, the common thought is it's some kind of giant crocodile, but uh, I, I tend Crocodile to god. <clears throat> it's some well, kind of um... giant crocodile god, but I imagine it's probably going to be more than that. Listen, mate. I'm three and a half feet tall. A regular crocodile is a giant crocodile to me. Okay. And I've killed plenty of them. It's just going to be one that's a little bit bigger. Yeah, but this How one's terrifying a whole village. I know they treat it as a god, but, I mean, they are fear it also. Look, mate. You got a nice steel sword there. I've got cherry. And we've got this cannonball over there who's shooting lasers out of his hands or whatever those is, those are. I don't see any of those lizard folk doing that. Well, I feel like we need to maybe try to take this creature at a distance. Maybe try to... Uh, I got this That's, longbow. Maybe you can take a look at it. It's it the way I prefer me. it all the time. But yeah, I'll look at the strings here and uh, see if I can't descend and do some, make sure it's alright. The lizard folk have explained that Thousand Teeth lives in a sort of a mud island in the middle of a pool deep in the Hool Marshes. <coughs> um, so he's on a little mud mound um, that's sort of in a, in a, in a, in a, like a, a jungle valley where the marshes sort of all the stunted marsh trees, it, it turns into a proper swamp. 
um, mm -hmm. right. with, with bigger trees um, that kind of overhang the wetland. And then it opens up into sort of a pool, um, a, a, a round pool that's 60 feet to the center from any side. And that's where the that's where Thousand Teeth makes his home, in, in the mud mound in the middle. And he sort of buries himself in the mud so that he can't be seen. And um, But he can kind of slink into the water and go in any direction that they try and get him from. Look, mate, I've been trudging around in swamps my whole life. I know that sometimes the best thing to do is to just trust your own ability and dive in head first. And they, they, they tell you, too, that the pool is about eight feet deep, so you, you wouldn't be able to sort of walk along the bottom. You'd have to swim. Or fashion a small raft. Maybe we can get a raft from these lizard men and have elder green's new friends carry it through the jungle for us the swamp i mean um you'd also know that the tree canopy um is kind of um growing up the sides of a valley so it does have sort of shade over halfway the pool the the branches extend you know a good 30 feet from the shoreline because they're aided by the slope of the terrain mm -hmm. so you can get along the branches sort of towards part way through to the center of the the lake what kind of vision right. do you think we'll have uh jack bow this these swamp like creatures do you think uh of clear vision we go early in the day or we try to wait till like dusk well i wouldn't want to fight it at night i want to be able to see it at... you ever try and I've, I've been in the swamp in the in the in the night time it's it's black as pitch and it's terrifying. And the only thing, and the only thing you can hear is the swashing of water or something that out there that wants to eat you. Well, I spent a few nights out there like that, and that was never very fun. No, mate. If you're gonna go hunting, we're gonna have to do it during the day when we got plenty of visual. Well, you're the resident monster hunter. I want to follow your lead. I want to be as prepared as possible. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to hit out early in the morning to try and get this thing. You think these lizard folk will pay us for doing this? <laughs> I don't know if they got much of value, mate. Everybody's got something of value, be it food or trinkets or weapons or secrets. There's value in I everything. Think that, I think that us helping them and then going back to Salt Marsh with a good report and the maybe the, the, the relationship that we've helped create, they'll pay us back at Salt Marsh with good gold. You're a dreamer, Jackabo. There's people in Salt Marsh who are going to shun this alliance. They're going to turn their backs on these people. They don't want nothing to do with them. Salt Marsh is split. Well, that might be true, mate. But I'm just a worker. How much do you think those teeth will go for? A thousand teeth? Well, I know on the market I used to sell uh, old gator teeth for maybe a copper or two piece. That's a pretty well, big one, though. It's very <clears throat> rare. Oh, yeah, look at the spear, and I, I kind of point out, look at this thing. I said, well, Elder Wilcox ain't got nothing on this bitch. Yeah, the tooth is a foot long, and it's clearly magical. Ooh. So you'll be able to determine that's magical. Well, it's Elder Green. Can you take a look at it? I can ask it, my god what he thinks. It's clear to all of you that it's magical. It's a plus one spear. No. He says, hell Sweet. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking if things go sideways you probably should take this spear Elder Green I, I know you don't fight with weapons that much you got Henry but maybe you can name this spear and it might come to some use for you in case you know me and Jacobo don't stand a chance <laughs> Um, the spear is a dex weapon when thrown so if anybody's got dex it could help there that's What's a that? One, the spear. Oh, okay. One shot. Yep. It uses yeah. your dex bonus when thrown, and you can throw a weapon as a bonus action on a turn uh, when you're fighting with two hands. So that's yeah, just something about that d6. I know I'm just being a meta game of a man. A d6 to toss it like that. Oh, I'm greedy. Mm. <laughs> I use a d6. Yeah, but you got <laughs> some kind of modifier that turns everything you roll into a 17 damage. 
or not. <laughs> that modifier uh... is called faith. <laughs> it's called Hunter's Mark. Oh, there you go. It's a magic. It's a magic that I live. Well, uh, do you want this spear or not, Elder Green? I, I just uh, want to make sure at least offer you it. I also got this studded leather armor. I know you, you like wearing your robes, but man, if we're going to go into the shit, you might want to be dressed a little bit more uh, defiantly. Well, maybe I can put it on under my robes. I'll never tell. It smells like fish and rum. <laughs> Sweat. Oh. <laughs> It, it reminds me of my father. <laughs> <It's> sm- <laughs> Spoilers! It smells a lot like that summer we spent in the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of, uh, so you all pass the night, um, yes, and get and head off in the morning, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I yeah. Will so ride before you guys uh, set out, um, Elder Green. Um, some of your your followers approach you, and um, they ask you to teach them the ritual that they need to be initiated. Oh, oh. okay. That? They don't look like they're gonna come. Well back. then, I will spend an afternoon um, baptizing my one, two, three, four, five, five yeah, new you, members. You spend an hour in the morning before everyone else is <laughs> doing that. Jacoba wakes up and like sees what you're doing and tends to sleep, <laughs> so that he doesn't have to come over there. Uh, okay, then you so are... these are my brothers and sisters now. Excellent! So, I'm so, so glad. So as everybody is seeing you all off into the marshes, um, it's a hot morning. Um, there's no, the air is not moving, even though you're still on the coast. There's no breeze. Something about the marshes is overwhelmingly strange. Um, There's a heaviness. It seems hard to breathe. And as you pass a group of shamans, um, they sort of give you the hairy eyeball. Um, And and Elder Green, you can hear them in Draconic um, sort of putting curses on you, like hoping that the worst happens to you. Oh, because they worship the god. Okay. As soon um, as they put a curse on me, I would like to use um, Thaumaturgy to make the ground shake under their feet. Okay, roll a um, yeah. persuasion check. Or intimidation check. Okay. Is that the first roll of the night? Woohoo! No, I've rolled before. Shit. And I rolled a 17, and it is a plus 4, so it's 21. Um, they sort of just uh, stare at you in awe and then scatter back uh, into the uh, into the into the uh, hideout. I'm gonna turn around and give a thumbs up to my new converts. <laughs> and they are they are looking at you with approval. Um, the the scarred one sort of starts he sort of starts weeping. His uh, angry scarred face sort of sort of looks hopeful and he falls to his knees. Aw, Valinjin. <laughs> my thing off all right so Those guys the best. You, you set off early in the morning and uh <laughs> Jacopo you realize that it's it's a good thing that you did your homework and kind of got a lay of the land because um otherwise you would have easily gotten lost the uh the mists that sort of would have evaporated by you know uh an hour into the sunrise are seem to just uh, linger and get thicker. Uh, they almost seem magical. Mm. As you uh, trudge through some mostly uh, tall grasses and uh, stinking sort of uh, that fish coastal mm. yeah. smell, um, but also the rotting vegetation uh, from the marshland. Yep. And there are no trees, to, not many trees to speak of, but there are many skeletons of trees. And uh, you follow the river north, uh, deeper into the Hool Marshes, for a few hours. Um, and it smells like of, gold grain to its hails. Yeah, there are flies and stinging insects everywhere. It's really unpleasant. Um, there aren't very many sounds, though. It's, like, unnaturally quiet. Okay. Um, we'll just, I'll just keep leading the party as best I can, and I'll just kind of 
caution them to be careful of not falling into any nasty water or sticking their feet in anything that looks like uh, don't try to avoid quicksand Jacopo, you do notice that the uh, the chirping of frogs is sort of picking up loudly again, sort of like it did when you were ambushed by that giant toad in its toad riding warrior. Oh no! Hi, blokes. Hold up. You hear those frogs? It's just like when we were on the boat, and that fella jumped up out of the water and got mad about this magic club that I happen to be carrying right now. Everybody, be ready. And now you all notice that it's getting louder and louder until it's sort of a deafening single noise. It's screaming in your ears. Ah. We didn't get dressed up for nothing. <laughs> and then uh, suddenly it's completely silent again. That was strange. Calm before the storm. Stay ready. I got both my swords out. Hey, I'm, getting, I'm getting my crossbow ready here. So you continue to follow the river, and it sort of widens, and um, you walk for another hour, and you can only tell that it's uh, getting later in the day, just kind of because you can see the pale disk of the sun sh sh kind of shining through the mists, and you can tell that it's also overcast, and that, that, that drizzle um, from the, the morning is kind of picked up into more of a, uh, a sprinkling rain, and sort of constant. But there's still no noises from animals um, after that the, the you heard the singing of the, the, the frogs. Huh. And um, then, Jacopo, you... Uh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was just trying to think that I might be able to do. Uh, I'm just trying... No, go ahead and tell me hey, what you're Hey, say. Jacopo. Mm-hmm. Didn't you say that the, the uh, lizard folk told you that the uh, Thousand Tooth Devourer is kind of like in his own little island of sorts, but a lot of water? Roy. Well, if I'm wearing this mariner's armor, I'm going to be able to swim. Do you want this helm of underwater action? <laughs> that will uh, allow you to uh, swim also and even breathe underwater should it come down to that. I know you're going to try to stay ranged, but no reason sure, for mate. me to double dip. Sure, mate. I don't know that I would have to stop and I'd have to look in. Oh, the, the, you know, yeah, you'd have to uh, attune to it. To attune a, to it. Tight. Might be too late. Yeah. That would take too long. I wish I thought about that before we went to bed. It's all right, mate. I'll be okay. You go ahead and use it yourself. Yeah, well. At least keeps the bugs out of my eyes. As you continue to follow the river north uh, into the overcast swamp, you notice that the, the, the trees start to get a little bit thicker. Um, I've kind of got my... Short sword out to swap through, you know, and chop, it chop, seems chop. to become uh, a little bit alive again. You can hear now. You can hear birds uh, rustling. It's almost as if the trees are keeping the fog out. Um, but they uh, kind of have a they sort of have a terror of. There's still of no wind, um, and it still just smells like rotten. Um, everything. Bo yeah, rotten bog. <clears throat> Like I said before, it smells like old granddad's house. And it's much darker under the canopy of the the, uh, the swamp trees. Um, and then suddenly you you all hear the sound um, of a. It sounds like a, like a low horn, um, sort of pierce through the woods in a um, like a one direction sound that kind of just comes over you like like a car passing like. Rawr, rawr. That comes through the through the the top of the canopy kind of like it, yeah no it kind of rings through the hollow of the of the of the swamp trees it's uh would you I, can tell that it's coming from the north would i recognize this sound at all like as any kind of animal or does you have advantage in the swamp right uh that's my favorite terrain but i don't know okay. that it has let me see what it says about that would elder greens people know anything about that sound uh, let me just advantage on survival and intelligence checks concerning the chosen creature type. No, nope. yep. that's 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 favorite that's favorite enemy. Oh, okay. um, hang on. Uh, on wisdom checks concerning the chosen terrain. So what's a uh, so is is um, nature is an int skill, right? So survival a wisdom skill? Yes. 
So go ahead and roll a survival check to see if you can recognize. Okay. Uh, 17. It sounds to you like the uh, the language of the Ents. Oh, come here, mate. Did you hear that loud noise just now, hollowing through the trees? No. I, mean, I did, did Ed. but no. <laughs> I think that's tree Ents communicating. And you'd know that it's a whale of distress. Doesn't sound like they're too happy. They're giving away a sounds position. Like, sounds like they're in trouble. They don't sound like they're angry. They sound scared. Or under distress. <laughs> we better be very careful. If they're angry, if they're upset, and that means there's something definitely scary up ahead. Another louder cry sort of pierces through the gloom. Yeah, that's bone chilling, mate. Let's approach with extreme caution. And uh, we'll go ahead and... So we're just going to keep on trudging through, but let's kind of try and move slowly, stealthily, and, and like almost like we're stalking a deer, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, because okay. I'm, I'm wearing the Mariner's armor, I'm going to have disadvantage on stealth checks. So. Well, because Jacopo is leading you through the swamps, and uh, because of his study of the terrain... Um, you, they will cancel out your disadvantage to a stealth check, and then um, Elder Green and Jacopo will have advantage. Hey. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Awesome. Are we going to take a stealth check then? Do here. Okay. Yeah, you can all make a check if you want. Just asking if we you want to. We don't necessarily one. want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, was at, I, I thought you meant you were asking. I just wanted to clarify with the DM that I had disadvantage, that's all. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Uh, my stealth check would be 23, just trying to move quietly through the, um... And I got the, a 20. The I got 15. Uh, I don't... I got 15. I'm, I'm going to try and keep attention from being drawn to us, but, uh, because... Uh, but we we want to maybe sneak up on any danger before we before we just go trudging into it. Can any yeah, of y'all so talk you... to trees? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I oh, talk to trees, Gilfin. Hey, you talk to all kinds of things. Who knows? Crazy. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever heard him big talk you. <laughs> so you ought to sort of uh, stick to the shadows of the swamp, and you notice yeah. that even though the terrain is wet, uh, Jacopo is pointing out the right places to step so that it sort of minimizes the squish through the mud, and he's finding you flat surf stone surfaces um, uh, underneath the pools of water where you're it's more sure-footed, and you find yourself sort of quietly sneaking north along the river, um, and as you do, you hear that sort of is, there's these whimpered moans uh, that sound similar to the, sh the screams. Did that, is you, that a different? This is a different creature now. No, you can tell it's the same creature, just not with the volume and effort that you had uh, at mm. first heard. Okay. And you come upon what appears to be a small wooded, uh, a small wounded swamp ent. Entling. Who's missing um, an arm? That's terrible. I can grow back. Would uh, would Jack Jacobo know how to approach this thing? To to I want to try and I want to try and attempt to approach it, but in a um a un menacing manner. Like I don't want I want to come make a. Well, um, Jacopo recognizes that the end uh, looks really familiar, and it looks similar to the club that he's holding. Oh. I pull. I, I'm gonna pull it out then, and I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna approach slowly with it. Almost steady, boy. Steady, also boy. Also recognizes the source of the Ents' distress, because he's being attacked by a swarm of serpents. Sexy lady. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> by my ex-girlfriend. Being directed oh. by a druid. Ah, that's where the lady comes in. Whoa, no! Oh, snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? So I love your snakes, ma'am. So your exclamation draws her attention to you. <laughs> Great. Everybody roll initiative. All right. Yay. So much for being stealthy. Sorry. Well, you know, when you see a, a lady with some nice snakes, you gotta let her know. Yeah, no, yeah. I ought to already have started. Anyway, pulled out my 
Gonna give it to him. Ah, uh, shit. Where's my initiative at? Oh, there it is. So you're about um, 300 feet from. Uh, you can see them that far, but she's she's noticed you just because of your your exclaim. I'd but imagine they're, they're much they're much further up the river. You're There's probably feet a lot away. of a uh, lot of cover and stuff between there too, so it's probably not a 100% shot. Yes, you're 20. There's 25% obscurity. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So as you see this sight, um, you notice um, in the distance that the the wounded treant is um, covered in a swarm of movement. He's just completely uh, wrapped up in these serpents. Uh, and uh, you stole the attention of this druid uh, from the tree, uh, the, the tree end. And now she has directed half of the swarm to your direction. So a swarm of poisonous snakes starts uh, speeding your way six, uh, 60 feet. So now they're 240 feet away. Oh, she's giving us a closer look. The other swarm is, is going to just sort of like gnaw its way at the tree and, and it continues to scream. That was a really well, well thought out sentence. A swarm of snakes slithers 60 feet in your direction. <laughs> there was a lot of S's. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be terrified. <laughs> All right. Um, so now it's Elder Green's turn. Oh, well, um, what do you think, fellas? Does she seem nice? Not at all. Anyone who bites snakes and then sends them at me is not a friendly beast. She's poisoned. <laughs> all right, then. Let's kill her. Was that your um, I'm, bar? <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, attack. I'm going to use um, Eldritch Blast on the snaky druid bitch. So what's the range on your Eldritch Blast? Oh, dear. I've never had to have that much blast before. Let's check. How far away is she? 300 feet. Uh, I don't think that makes it. She's a good long way. Yeah, it's 120. So let's see here. Uh, I'm going to see if You've I have You've got the river to your right and sort of a swamp. It's a swamp tree terrain that's uh, inclining upwards. The water, the river is running um, south. The direction of the current is south, and it's t it's to your right hand side. And the other side of the river, it's a good um, 300, uh, another 300 feet away. So the river's been widening as you go. Okay, and that swarm of um, serpents that are coming at us. Uh, yep. How far away are they? 240 feet. They d they took a double move on their action. Goodness. Well, what I'm going to do is prepare my Eldritch Blast, so if something comes within 100 feet, I will fire away. Okay, sounds good. Uh, is that the end of your turn, Elder Green? That is the end of my turn. All right, Jacopo, it's your turn. Hmm. I have to look here. My crossbow has a range of 320 feet. But only 80 feet when when in uh, uh I'm sorry when uh, without the bench this bench um <clears throat> I'm sorry boys can we bring up Hunter's Mark the uh, screen how do I do that that's uh, whatever they call it it's a, it's a spell. Spell. Oh, it's a spell? So, yeah. There you go, yeah. Okay, sorry, thank you. Um, I usually have ranger cards, but I didn't get them out. I, I didn't think about it. Oh, it's only a range of 90 feet, so I won't be doing that either. Um, you said the snakes are 250 feet 240 away? feet away. Okay, I'm going to... Oof. 25 feet and also ready my action to uh, shoot a crossbow at the target. 
So yeah, if you're standing on a football field, they're at you're at one end zone, they're at the other. That's how far away they are. And the, uh, the snakes are at the you know the, the 20 yard line, uh, working towards the 50. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You see those distances in your mind's eye? Yes. Yep. How about you, Trent? Does that work for you? <laughs> Football. <laughs> What's your sport, Trenton? Soccer? What do we want? How about it's the end of your street, okay? <laughs> yeah, I got it. I, yeah. I remember, got it. You remember the Quidditch field? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> um, and then, Gilfin, it's your turn next. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and use the um, pull the longbow out and just go ahead and take a shot with the help. So okay. it's probably going to be, it's over 150 feet, so it's going to be attacked with uh, disadvantage. Yep. So that's rolled a 13 the first time. I rolled a 7, so we'll take the 7. So. That's 12 to hit. Uh, no, that does not hit. So your shot kind of falls harmlessly behind the swarm as they're uh, making their way towards you. Uh, never, on their bellies. You never really taught me how to shoot this thing, Jack. Oh, you gave it to me as a gift. And, you know, yeah. Ah, you can shoot it fine enough, just not that far away, mate. Even I would have struggled to do that. It's slithery, snakey little things. Woo! Give it a notch up another shot for next time. <laughs> so you're readying, um... Well, no, I mean, no, I mean, that was oh, my okay. action. I'm I didn't just, know if you I'm had I'm thematically to saying that he's like, oh, you know, they're still so far away. Gotcha, okay. That concludes my turn. I need to look at my, um... You can see in the distance that the, uh, the snake commanding druid, she readies a, uh, her, her hand is encased in flame. She hurls it in the direction of the, the tree ant. No! Oh, trees hate that! <laughs> so that, yeah, the, uh, the tree ant sort of catches on fire and quickly uh, tries to pat itself out. That poor little fella. But it, it definitely takes a scorch. It needs to come and to you us. Can, and you can see that it's... Um, Certainly in distress, and sort of smashing at the uh, the swarm of, of uh, snakes that it continues to swirl around its body and then bite away at it. Drop and roll, Woody. <laughs> so he called him Woody because he's my Woody. It kind of smashes itself in the in the torso, and a good third of the the, the snake swarm sort of falls away dead on the ground. Yeah. And then uh, the swarm that's coming towards you uh, takes the dash action and is now 180 feet away. Um, it's your turn, Jacopo. They're 100. I'm oh, sorry, Elder Green. I skipped Elder Green. Okay, okay. very good. Um, well, then 180 and yeah, even if I move, I'm not going to be in range. So you can, yeah, take the dash action, but then you wouldn't have enough. Um, you wouldn't have an action to use, so... Yeah, I'll just, once again, prepare for if they get within range, I'll do an Eldritch Blast. Think about how many clubs we can make if that thing dies. Oh, he might. It's not nice. What? Well, it's, totally it's a lot of clubs. No, I'm, my turn's done, so... Yeah. It's uh, Jacopo next. Can't really get here. Um... I'm going to see about doing something real quick. Um, how far away are they now from me? Uh, the snake swarm is 180 feet away. I'm going to move. I'm at, so 180. If I move 50, that makes them 130 feet away. And they can probably move another 60. By then, we'll probably be engaged with each other. I'm just going to dash. I'm going to run in there and try and take position. So you're um, gonna meet, move 60 feet closer? Move 60 feet closer. Can I, is there a, you know, I'm thinking like a sniper though. I wanna try and like crouch down the log or any kind of thing that might, so just try and take a little bit of cover if I can by the time I've reached the end of it. So maybe try and gain 
uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's, you could take half cover behind a half sunken uh, stump tree, or you could take full cover but behind a thick swamp tree um, to your left there. Just half cover. I wanna, I wanna. I'm thinking like you know, like if I was Daryl Dixon uh, running around trying to shoot zombies, I would probably jump behind something. Yeah. You know, okay. Uh, you know, get ready for the oncoming slaughter that's coming. Sounds good. All right, then, uh, Gilfin, it'll be your turn. I'm gonna move up to 30 feet, so that should get these snakes about to 180, I mean, sorry, 150 feet, which would make it a regular shot. All right. I rolled a two, so... I really can't get a hang of this thing. Can I just use a sword? <laughs> I like hacking and slashing. What's your range on a bow? A long bow? A long bow is 150. So you don't have to roll with disadvantage. Did you roll with disadvantage? I just or rolled regular? one time and I rolled a two. Oh, oh, I, I rolled a yeah. two. You certainly haven't practiced with your bow. I told you. Every day, about 15 minutes, really benefit you. I thought you were another thing, strumming other things. <laughs> well, you guys see in the distance that, again, that druid, uh, um, you know, casts a magical flame around her hand and uh, hurls it towards the, the, the wounded tree ant. Can't save them all. And he responds by, again, uh, patting himself out and slamming at that swarm on his torso. And then another third of those uh, snake swarm drops away. Good riddance. The swarm that's headed your uh, way takes the uh, dash uh, move again. So uh, now uh, the snakes are within uh, uh, 60 feet of Jacopo and 90 feet of uh, Gilfin and 120 feet of um, Elder Green. So Elder Yay. Green, you get to take uh, your action. Yep, so I'm just, I'm going once, right? Yep. Because, okay, Blast. that's what I thought. Blast. All right, well, then I'm going to roll a hit, and let's see. Um, I believe that will hit. It's, um, 20 to hit, I think. That hits. Yeah. So, I'm going to roll damage. And it's going to end up being 12 damage. All right, that's a full third of the swarm uh, is engulfed in the light of the front of your blast and just uh, incinerated. Hooray. Crack, crack, boot, and bang. Jacopo, it's your turn. They're within, uh, or unless you wanted to move or anything, Elder Green. Um, no, I am okay. All right, uh, it's your turn, uh, Jacopo, and they're 90 feet away. All right. Um... Oh wait, did you do the double move? I'm sorry, they're 60. Yeah, I did 60, do. yeah. Yep. Oh, so they're in 60, so I can shoot from where I'm at. Yep. I'm gonna, um, they're 60 feet away. I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, bonus action that I have to um, focus on these snakes with my monstrous hunting fire. This isn't Hunter's Mark, it's my Hunter's... Uh, my, so it makes uh, your first attack, it's an extra 1d6, right? Correct. I'm yep. gonna try and take a shot at him with me, old cherry. The old school cherry here. Oh no, it's not a very good roll. Um, it's a 13 to hit. That does not hit, so again, uh, so cherry just, just above the mark sails over the swarm as it sort of is snakes along low to the ground. And you were judging me? Gilfin, they're yeah. 90 feet away. Uh, Jacopo, you can still move too, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm gonna stay right there. Okay. Long, long bow again, he's notching another one. Actually, let me ask you this, DM. How far yep. away is the edge from me? Uh, so you have moved, uh, they were 300 away to start, and you, they, the snakes have been moving towards you, but you've only moved 30, so they're 270 away. Right. Okay. They're, far, they're too far away for me to try and go save that end. I'm alright. He notches up another arrow, and it kind of just zings off into the uh, to the trees. I rolled a four. God damn it! God damn it! Or whatever you want to say. Cthulhu damn it! 
Don't right. use the good lord's name in vain. It wasn't in vain, it was in disappointment. Oh, okay, that's fine then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move myself up to uh, Jacobo's side. Okay. So, first, first, so you are. I miss my now attack. Now sixty then feet I... close. Uh, sixty feet uh, from your starting position. and well, Two hundred forty feet away from the druid. Yeah. So I, yeah. I move thirty feet after a failed attack, and I, I just put the bow away as I'm going. As I'm walking, do I get a free action maybe to pull the swords out or just put the bow? Sure. Away? You can. Yeah. You can drop this. You can put the bow away and draw your, your, your okay. weapon. Okay. It's fine. Fuck these bows. I'll leave that to the jack of bows. <laughs> so in the distance, uh, you see that the um, the uh, the druid sort of uh, blows into her hands, and a foul uh, yellow mist sort of engulfs um, the the tree, and uh, it sort of doubles over, coughing. That poor int. That's a beautiful yellow mist. And a swarm of snakes uh, swirling around it continues to gnaw away at it. Um, and it finally, and it slams its uh, its torso again. To, but this time, the uh, the the shakes, the snakes sort of swarm out of the way. There's so few of them left that they're able to avoid. And he, and he doesn't do any damage to himself, but he also doesn't take out any of the snakes swirling around him. Um, the ones that are coming towards you are now only 60 feet away from Jacopo and uh, Gilfin. Um, but they still they still they still race um, t still race towards you. So they take a dash movement, and they're right in front of you. The the, the, the swarm of them is more than you thought. Um, there's enough snakes there uh, to cover, you know, a good five full grown men, and they are just kind of piling on top of each other um, at your feet, you know, sort of like a living carpet of death. Well, there's only oh. one full grown man here, so we'll be fine. Uh, Jacopo, they are. Um, or sorry, Elder Green. They're sixty feet away from uh, from you at the feet of your friends. Um, it's your turn. I would like to use. Um, yeah, I'll just blast again. Okay. And it is a thirteen to hit. Uh, it does not hit. So the uh, the low profile of this uh, carpet, this moving carpet uh, of snakes, of adders, and and uh, and, uh, and cobras. Um, sort of just is able to evade your your eldritch blast. Damn. That's the end. I'm not gonna. All right, uh, Jacopo. Then they're at your feet. All right, Jacopo kind of like quick draws his his little uh, cherry two thousand, almost like Clint Eastwood. You know, he's gonna take a couple of shots at these damn things. First roll is uh, a nineteen. So that's well over twenty to hit them. That hits. Second one is going to be 23 to hit. So I roll a 19 and a 15. So I'm going to do 2d. Speed this along here. Make it quick. 3d6. Five, eight, 12. 20 damage. So uh, your two shots are able to impale. <laughs> Uh, t uh, these tangled masses of ropey, uh, slithering bodies that have just knotted themselves uh, to a halt uh, uh, with being pierced by your arrow. And uh, just a good pile, two big piles of swarms of snakes. You just happen to shoot at the right time uh, so that there are, um, most of them are now dead at your feet. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> maybe the maybe the crossbow bolts, razors, they, they open up like the special hunting heads and they cut a few of them. <laughs> That's nice. Very good. That's my bonus action and my regular action done. Okay. So I'm done. Good. Uh, Gilfin, it's uh, your turn. There are a few uh, uh, swarms uh, here and there trying to reform into a larger mass, but there just aren't enough snakes left to do it. Start with the rapier. Okay. It's very rapey of you. 21. And then Hits. It's going to be uh, seven points slashing damage. All right, how do you want to finish stabbing into the pile? 
Well, I just saw I saw Jackbo tear it up, and I just kind of went back and just started swiping close to his feet, like you know. And I know Jackbo ain't got shoes on, so I know Jackbo's kind of curling his toes up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you sort of swipe your sword and rake it along the, yeah. all the bodies yeah. of the remaining. I'm just, I'm just trying to get them out of your way. I don't want them to bite your toesies. They're clearing it like you're clearing uh, with a machete, clearing the, the low trees. Yeah. Chop, and then, chop. Uh, Yell back to Elder Green. The way's clear. All right, so 200. Uh, so is that the end of your turn as well, Gilfin? Uh, I will go ahead and move up 30 feet. All right. So 210 feet from Gilfin, the uh, the druid continues to cast her magics against that the, the uh, wounded tree ant, and it drops down to a knee. No. Again, she blows a poisonous haze across it, and it sort of pats, uh, beats away at the snake covering its body. But again, they seem to swirl around its arms as it strikes, and uh, it's not able to shake any of them loose. Um, it's Elder Green's turn. They're 240 feet away from you, Elder Green. Well then, Elder Green is going to move forward by um, 60 feet. Oh, sorry, they're actually 300 from you, right? Because you didn't move up. Right, yeah, so I'll move up to 240. All right, so now they're 240 away. Okay. Uh, and then Gilfin, it's your go. Or sorry, Jack Oh, oh Jack uh, we're running out of time. Jack um gathers up his stuff and just goes to running. Um, now, the, how far away are these for me now? I'm sorry. So if you make your full move, you'll be 210 feet away. And then if you make a dash, away. they'll be uh, 180. I'm going to run my full move. Um, I have a, I have my crossbow. I'm going to try and... He's going to stop and try and take a, a Hail Mary shot at that druid to get her, get her attention with okay. disadvantage. All right. Uh, I roll 9 plus 8. So it's going to be 17 to hit. That hits. All right. So he just runs 30 feet, drops down to one knee, sticks his tongue out and closes one eye, and shoots it up into the air. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to focus my ire on her. Because I walked one... Yeah, because I didn't use a dash, so I can have a bonus. So I, oh shit, where's my D8? Sorry, boys. Sorry, sorry. Um, seven, seven, eight, uh, 12. 12 piercing damage. All right, you hear a loud feminine scream sort of echo through the, uh, the, the swamp, the hollows of the swamp trees. You leave Woody you alive! And the arrow sort of pierces through her thigh. Oh, that's a nice thigh. <laughs> Too bad. All right, is that the end of your turn, Jacopo? Yep, sure is. And I've used four bolts. All right, Gilfin, it's your go. We bolts, actually. We shoot. You are 210 feet away. Well, I'll move 60 feet. Uh, so you'll you'll move your uh, full move, and then you take a dash action. Yes, and I'm going to try to yell at her. You know, try to get her attention. You know. You make like a tree and leave. So she's 150 <laughs> feet away from you now, and uh, she's well aware of your presence. Okay. It was a good one. I should have said. That. I should have said make like an ant and leave. God damn it. God damn it. Cthulhu damn it. I'm sure uh, Elder Green can't hear me. I still appreciated it. I'm shocked. Um, you see that she kind of again focuses on that tree ant, and uh, she raises her arm into the sky, and uh, some some vines sort of sprout from the ground and then engulf the tree ant and uh, sort of pin it so that it stops uh, being able to defend itself against the snakes. No. Uh, the tree ant sort of like squirms around and tries to to bust free. So let's see if he gets out. Oh, natural one. Nope. No. Well, that's because a tree cannot squirm. Okay. Yep. There's no such thing as a squirming tree. And the snakes continue to bite it and inject it with this uh, their poison. Oh, 
Let's go to Elder Green. Uh, you are... Uh, how the fuck far away is it? 240, yes. Alright then, um, I'm just gonna dash up there. Which okay, so you take your what, dash 180? within 180, yes. Alright, there we go. Let's stand my target. Alright. Uh, Jacopo. Good hustle, Elder Green. Good hustle. You're at 210. Alright. Uh... My 25 feet. Oh, I've been giving uh, you 30, so just take 30. I forgot you were small. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little tawny fella. Well, you know how to move around. 30, so into, into 180. I'm uh, uh, moving 25 feet. Yes, to 180. Um, you're... Uh, let's see. My crossbow is a, is a is still disadvantaged. So. Um, I'm gonna try and focus though instead. I'm gonna try and assist our my int friend. Would that be impossible for me to do? Uh, what do you want to assist him in? Shoot the snakes. You wanna shoot at the snakes? <laughs> Alright, they're the yeah. same distance away, you know, as the druid, so I mean, you know. He's you're... gonna he's gonna be like, Hold still, Woody! Try and help ya! Alright, so you're shooting at them with disadvantage. Disadvantage. Let's see what my disadvantage is. Oop. You Ooh, killed no, the it. Nope, nope, it's a two, so it's gonna be uh, only a mere ten to hit. Yeah, luckily your your, your crossbow bolt so, sort of sails over uh, both uh, the ants and the snakes. Okay. Yes, in my turn. I don't know right. else. Gilfin, you're 150 feet away. Speed for 60. So you are now uh, 90 feet away, and that's the end of your turn. So now the druid sort of looks at you and makes the same gestures that she just made uh, towards the tree. End. So, um, go ahead and make a strength saving throw. I'll be a <laughs> two. Dose. Right. A deuce. So the uh, the vines sort of sprout from uh, around your feet and entangle you as well. You are now restrained. Okay. I don't mean you gotta reframe. Um, and then um, the snakes continue swarming across the tree and he's now down on both knees. I... It's gonna be Elder Green's turn. You are 210 away, right? 210, no, 180. All right. I think no, you're 210. Sorry, 210. I thought I did get down to 180. No, you're right. Yeah, 180. Dash. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Two dashes. That's right. All right. Well, um, then I'm just going to move up 30 feet. Okay. So you're 150 um, Which away. won't put me at yeah, which won't put me in range. So I'm just going to prepare an action for if something comes in range. I'll shoot Eldritch Blast. Okay. And I think that's where Jacopo is, right? You're at 150. Also. Yeah. Yep. Somewhere around there. And I will um, move another 25 feet to be closer to Mr. Trient. So I'm still giving you 30 feet increments. Uh, oh, okay. So, All right, right, right. Yeah. So, uh, so you're 120. All right, 120. Let me look at the range of this thing. Oh, no, that is still too far away for me. I am not a bow user. So disadvantage, I'm going to try and get those snakes, my friend. Ah, level 15. Uh, it's going to be well over 20 to hit. Yep, that hits. And this is going to be... I'm just really focusing with my monster slayer abilities. Uh, it's going to be 8 damage to the, to the snakes. Alright, so they sort of like cluster themselves up as if they're all going to rear back and strike at once. And that's when your arrow sort of uh, cuts through the rest of them and they fall uh, to the feet of the tree ant. Um, although it's still tangled by vines, um, whatever remaining snakes are slither away and out of the control of the druid. So right. they're no longer a threat. They lost, they lost their, uh, their initiative, so they took off. Yep. All right, cool. I like that. That's a good way for a swarm to dissipate. It's always so hard to describe ranged attackers taken out of swarm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always struggled with it anyway. 
That's cool. That's the end of my turn. All right, Gilfin, you're entangled. You can make a, a strength uh, check to get unentangled. Well, he notices that the, the vines are wrapped quite tightly around his legs. And uh, he's old and brittle, and he can't quite struggle himself free. So he drops his swords down and pulls the bow he had, the long bow on his back. He's going to go ahead and take an attack. Now it's going to be with disadvantage, but he's within range now. So okay, it's not like double disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, right. No. First one's a 19. So you're going to shoot your, your bow at the druid? Yes. Okay. The first one was a 19. The second one was a 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. That hits. All right, so. All right, then that's a D8. Oh, that was an 8. 11 points of uh, piercing damage. All right. I finally got to work! I just needed something to hold me still. Nice. Good. All right. Nice. The vines start to cut off the circulation to his legs. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to uh, transform into a snake. Okay. Oh no. And um, let's see if I can make a. Jacopo, you've got the highest passive, percep passive perception of 14, right? 14. Let's give her a stealth check here. And she's going to uh, sneak away. <gasps> So the combat ends, and then the uh, the, the vines fall away from both uh, Gilfin and the uh, the tree ant. I mortally wounded her. How about that, Jackabo? All oh, that arrow and finally worked you, out. You should have gave her a good poke. That was, it was a very nice shot, mate. Very well uh, placed. Thank you. Thank you. And you see the tree ant sort of stumble up to his feet, and you hear him holler at you, My friends, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Oh. Look, mate, um, I see you're missing an arm there. Now you get closer and you see that he's got a thousand tiny pinpoints um, all over his bark skin, just oozing sap. <clears throat> and it seems to be like faintly glowing magically. And you're the very, similar way that the, um, the club is. You're very badly wounded. I, look, mate, we found this floating around in the river. Does it belong to you? And I pull it out. Show it to him. It did once, but as my leaves fall, it now belongs to the land. Well, I could try and mend it for you, mate. I could stick it back on you. I'm a... I'm a well, I don't want to insult you. I'm a really craft, uh, <clears throat> skillful woodworker. Uh, you probably don't want to hear that. What manner of magics <laughs> do you know? Uh, well, I, I might be able to reattach it to your body. Well, you hold it um, up against it, and it so it doesn't sort of seem to fit exactly anymore. Sort of like the uh, the knot on a tree after you've um, cut it away over so many years wouldn't fit the, the limb that fell. <clears throat> what if I was to maybe uh, use some of my tools to tap this back on there with some nails and maybe tie a vine around it, and it might... Graft together like like the way Pete gardeners take trees uh, and graft them together. He he sort of like backs away. He's like, I'm not certain I would appreciate having anything nailed into me. Well, yeah, Bo, people don't like it when you take their severed limbs and reattach them to their bodies. I found that out the hard way. We all have to learn that lesson. All right, all right. Well, uh. And just because they're like, oh, that's not even my arm. It's Who was like, that crazy uh, lady? I don't know. I was striding through the marshes and she attacked me. It was some form I've of random attacked, encounter? I've been attacked often as of late. I was chased by a bullywug. Hmm. We're, we're, we're trying to travel through the forest to make it to the middle of the swamp. We're going to fight giant monster and we're trying to we've we were we too were uh, attacked by a bunch of uh, was was it a bullywog that attacked us wasn't it in the river yeah a it was frog a man hey, well, are these are these snake ladies and bullywog in league there has been a lot of activity lately in the marshes 
They have been haunted for a long memory of a tree ant. But no things have dared to attack me in such a long time, as well respected as my people are. Well, I really am sorry to see, to, to see that you're wounded. I wish there was some way I could assist you. The marshes are always dangerous. I'll be fine in time. But perhaps I can thank you. What is it that you are hunting in the marshes? There's a great creature called the Thousand Tooth Monster. The Vera. Oh, so the lizard folk have finally decided they've had enough. And they've convinced you to hunt their god, the Thousand Teeth. That's what the goal is, mate. We're, we're, we're headed there now. It is a creature more deadly than anything that you've seen in the marshes. Well, I, I imagine if it, they made it sound really scary. I don't suggest this lightly, but you've helped me save my uh, help save my life. Perhaps I can help you kill this creature of a thousand teeth. It has mm. been a scourge in these marshes for longer than I have been alive. We would greatly appreciate your assistance. I, while they are discussing these things with the tree ants, am going to be collecting up snakes, skinning them, and putting their meat separate from their skins. Okay. Uh, so you know from your conversation with your followers that they will uh, use the snake skins to make like all kinds of things around the camp. So uh, when you return to the um, lizard folk lair, you know that you can use these skins as trade goods or uh, as leverage in bartering with maybe some of the people that haven't been quite convinced to your ways. Yes, I'm going to collect up as many as I can. All right, we'll see you harvest, um, you know, t uh, 20 good intact snake skins that can be used um, as a crafting material. And just a, like, chum of meat, yeah? Uh, yeah, let's say you get a good um, five pounds of meat, like, just bleeding through a sack. <laughs> the lizard folk that you follow, you will probably love that shit. <laughs> I'm going I to get will. a new robe. Jacobo will take a minute to gather up the, uh, the allowed half of my ammunition that I used. Okay. And uh, sort of as you're talking um, and gathering your, your snake skins and your ammunition, um, the tree ant sort of roots itself into the ground and uh, sort of has a vitality, close up some of those thousands of wounds. Um, over its body, so it's going to spend half of its hit, hit dice here to regain some hit points. Neat. Uh, let's see here. Five times so thirty-six. Okay. We All have right. a tree so, friend. So, what do you guys want to do? Continue on the hunt? Yes. All right. So, with the tree ant bringing up the rear, you follow the river for two hours into the mid-afternoon, and. Uh, the tree canopy overhead seems to kind of come and go as you walk those hours, um, but it, the day just keeps on getting hotter. It feels like it's 100 degrees. I'm glad I'm wearing this mariner armor. I'm sweating in it. And as the ground uh, along the riverside had been sort of sloping upward, you come away as the river continues to widen. Um, it splits off to the west in a more narrow tributary and Jacopo, you know that this is the um, the sort of feeder stream um, from from Thousand Teeth's pool, and it sort of becomes obvious to all of you as you see there's sort of caked uh, layer of uh, slime. Um, it's sort of pink and yellow, and it all smells more rotten than anything um, because this is where the Thousand Teeth's meals have sort of washed down this rivulet. And sort of caked the uh, the riverbanks, um, and the already fetid swamp with even more grizzly grime and. Grime. This is where he takes a shit, <clears throat> and it washes downstream. Yeah, it smells <laughs> it. It's his latrine, mate. Can we gather any information? How big are the uh, carcasses? Can we get a size? Idea? Just like you, some giant monster blows its nose, and you want to keep it. <laughs> Uh, Jacopo, it's obvious to you that this thing is uh, can is capable of capable of eating um, anything that you guys have seen so far, including those giant toads. 
All right, now Probably that's a, a size of giant toad. Probably in one gulp, Mike. No, no, it's capable big... of eating those giant toads. Yeah. It's bite Which were themselves the size of, like, donkeys or small fish. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's huge. That's you what I'm saying. You could probably take a family of four and have them stand there in its in its bite radius and have a have their picture painted. You ever fought anything fact, you like can... this, Jack Bull? What was that? You ever fought a creature this large, Jack Bull? Only in my dreams. Well, one of them ripped my boat apart. That giant cricket. The Iron Swan Gold Rester. Cthulhu the Rester. You all sort of follow this uh, this little rivulet um, further, sort of, at, and the, the now the ground kind of slowly. Uh, 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 <clears throat> sorry, now the kind of the, it opens into a valley, so it slopes down, just as the lizard folk described, and the jungle trees kind of close in, also as they said, um, still no wind, and uh, that. The river, the water source, sort of. Then you see it as the valley slopes down to the bottom, opens up into that pool. So you've come to the pool. It's 120 feet from shore to shore, and you can see in the distance a small mound of mud rising 60 feet um, away from the shoreline in the center of the pool. Shh! Look, mates. Here it is. That mud mud mound. See it? Yeah. <clears throat> Old thousand two seem to take a nap, most certainly. Let's turn it to his grave. You notice that your tree ant friend is uh, standing perfectly still, and uh, he is unrecognizable from the rest of the trees around him, except that you know that he's there. Good on him. Yeah. He I'll blends you, right in. That Kraken, it was so large, there's no way this creature down here is going to take me down. I mean, if I survive that, I can survive anything, right? Right. No. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, with Cthulhu on my side, right? Well, well said, Elder Green. <laughs> I guess. Right. <laughs> today you need you to see? pray to your, your bow, uh, Jack of Bow. It's going to be steel over the uh, Cthulhu god. Listen, Cherry's a bitch, and that monster's going to find out just how bad she is. I, um, I'm going to try and uh, slowly approach with my friends here to, uh, to try and see if we can ascertain if the monster <coughs> is visible. You want me to stay back? I, I'm, I'm kind of clanky in this armor. Yeah, so the tree sort of, uh, the tree ant sort of, uh, uh, it kind of root toes along the ground just to the shoreline. It's like, my friends, it will be nesting in that mound in the middle of the, of the lake. We've got to find a... How, how far... What's the distance between us and that mound? From the shore to the mound is 60 feet. Oh, okay. It's within fighting range, at least. How deep we'd is have this to... swamp? How deep is your swamp? It's, um, how the pool is, is eight swamp? feet deep. How deep is your swamp? I'm not going to be able to trudge across there. No, we're going to have to draw it out. I would like to, he said it's going to be sitting in the middle of that mound, and that mound is 80 feet away. 60. 60, 60 feet away, yep. I'm going to take my, um, sopping wet bag of snake meat and throw it into the water. All right. Oh, my goodness. It's good. We need to draw them out. Makes sense. <clears throat> you better be ready. All right, everybody roll initiative. Yes. Natural 20. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! Glad I have such a high initiative modifier. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see a picture of this bastard. Oh, I can't. I'm, I'll close my eyes. I'm gonna envision this story that's about to unfold as it creeps out of the fucking depths. 
Well, Gilson, um, you are surprised that um, you see some movement in the distance in the mound, uh, but you quickly lose track of it. It's your turn. Well, I would like to hold my action until... Oh, see? Let me refer, re, try to remember how this holding your action. You're just holding an action, not your like. You have to okay. choose, you choose a trigger. Yeah, you choose which action you're going to do, and then you tell me what triggers it. So you could even hold the dash action, for example, because if so, you could say, if it gets close to me, then I'm going to take my dash move or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can ready anything that you can do based I on know. a trigger. I know, but I'm basically only going to get half my turn. I'm gonna ready a uh, a bolt in the uh, the longbow, and if I can see the target, I'm gonna take an attack with the longbow. All right. So if if um, if the creature appears in range, you're going to take the attack action. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the range is 150 <clears throat> feet, so we should be okay. 150. Okay. So is that the um, that's range yeah. with advantage or disadvantage? That's that's up to advantage. It goes all the way up to uh, 600 with the longbow. Oh, okay, okay. So within 100, I mean, sorry, that, so it's a normal, so you're, you're saying within a normal range, yeah, um, you'll shoot it if you, if you see it. Yes. <clears throat> Sounds good. Okay. Um, so, um, actually, the treant goes next, and he's not going, he's sort of going to do the same. He's really like, did you see that? I think it is aware of us, but I have lost sight of it. And then Elder Green, it's your turn. Elder Green is going to take um, Elder Green is going to take a Okay, so tell me if you think he can do this as a bonus action. He's going to take a bottle of oil, open it up, and then throw it in the same place that he had the uh, snake meat. Okay. Yeah, I'll allow it. Uh, and then as an action, he is going to cast Produce Flame to conjure okay. a green flame. Green flame! His hand. In his hands. Alright, so your hands are alight in the green flame. And that is the end of my turn. <laughs> okay. At least the tension is rising. Uh, Jacopo, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. I would like to uh, see if I can get a good visual on the thing to, enough to where I might be able to cast Hunter's Mark on the bastard. So you uh, you don't you know you you you're you're not aware of its location. Okay. Mm. Yep. I'm gonna have to just do the same thing everyone else is doing. Then I'm gonna ready an action. I've got my uh, cherry two thousand ready to go. So what's the conditions? So what's the action you're gonna take? I'm gonna take the attack action as soon as that thing pops up. All right. So when it becomes visible, and if it's if it's within range, a uh, uh, regular attack range, or if, or would you even take the attack with dif disadvantage? Unlike uh, oh, let me see what my Gilfin. range is. <clears throat> I thought you said the mound yeah. was sixty feet away. He is. Yeah, it is, but you don't know away. where it is. So oh, okay. if it's All right. out of your okay. range, Gilfin, yes. Then, All right. You know, yes. Yeah. No problem. One hundred fifty feet. Gotcha. Yep. Anywhere within range. I don't care if it's with disadvantage. So what? He, what range is that? Uh, I I have a range of one hundred and twenty feet. 120 feet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and is that the end of your turn? Yep. I got nothing else. All right. He's playing with us. Kind of hear water splash in the distance. Birds kind of looking all over the place. Not sure. You think you see something, but you don't. The heat's getting to us. I, I call out to Woody. I say, Woody. Do you do you know what the creature might be doing? And just as you say that, <clears throat> um, what's everybody's marching order? I am behind the tree ant. Behind the tree ant, okay. Oh, it's or hard the ant, whatever it's called. Sorry, the tree ant is ten feet from the shore. I didn't stray far away from Gilpin. Yeah, I imagine we were kind of walking together. Are you both at the shoreline? Yes, why not? Uh, yeah, because right. I'm trying to get a good look yeah. at him. I want to see how deep the water but, was, so yes. But, uh, uh, Elder Green, you put your, you know, you're standing over your food in the water, right? Didn't you put it in the water? I th tried to throw it, I thought. Throw it, okay, you threw it. Okay, that's fine. 
And then you threw the oil there, too. Yeah, and then I threw a bottle of oil there. But you're there. behind the tree, Ann. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay. All right, then, uh, Jacopo. Uh, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, Gilfin. Go ahead and take your attack because um, Here. breaching the water's surface. The anticipation. <laughs> it's got me. Ah! Is ha! a uh, is it is it just a gigantic um, crocodile, caiman, alligator-like creature, uh... legendary in size, can swallow a deer whole easily, <clears throat> breaches the water, uh, with its jaws aimed so- uh, uh, firmly at Jacopo. Now that's crocodile Dundee. And as soon as it pops out, I mean, I kind of twinge the bow. I might not even hit with it. Who knows? That's going to be a, uh, a 20. That hits. All right. It's going to be uh, 8 points piercing damage with the longbow. Okay. Yakety yak. And I start okay. putting the... And after that, I just immediately drop the bow and go to pulling out the swords. <laughs> All right, Elder Green. Um, <clears throat> you also readied your action, right? No, I conjured a flame in oh, no, my that's hand. Good. So uh, it's your turn. Uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, <clears throat> so this giant monstrous crocodile breaches the water at Jacopo. Um, it uh, chomps down with its uh, gigantic jaws. Jacko gets his attack first, right? Oh, sorry. Yes, Jack Bo, you get your Before attack. Before he chomps down on you, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Natural 20! Whee! Wish I had well, had that spell cast. <laughs> well, that hits. Alright. My first Natural 20 of the night. <laughs> 10 damage. Okay. Now you get chomped down. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <clears throat> That's massive jaws. Snap at you. That's a 19 plus 7 is a 26 oh, yeah. to hit. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Jeez. Right. I think brother Blackthorn. You're gonna take 15 piercing damage. Okay. That's uh, then his body is going to sort of contort just as fast as a cobra strike from your right midget side. <laughs> his, his tail comes sweeping towards tail, you around yeah. his body. <clears throat> That's a 10 to hit. Nope. Oh, dodge it. How do you dodge it? As it uh, so he, he bites me and I'm like, uh, I'm like thrown to the ground and then I see that tail coming and I'm just so small I cover my, <laughs> cover my head like a kid hiding under his desk for, from a... Uh, from atomic bombs back in the day, you know? And then it, it goes over me, and I, I kind of come back to my feet. All right. Gilfin, this all takes place in front of you. It's your turn. Right, yes, a bloody big guy. I'm going to stop and jump out of character, okay? Yeah. I was told there was going to be lair actions. Um, I was wrong about that. They're okay. legendary. Okay. And they've been okay. taking right, place okay. unbeknownst good. to you. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I know you said lair, and I thought lair goes at yeah. 20. That's all. Okay, cool. Um, yell back at uh, Elder Green. These things are fast. And I'm, I'm pointing to the tree like maybe he could get some range if he gets up the tree. Maybe he gets some safety because he saw the bite that Jack did. And, okay. Uh, and the creature's still in front of me? Yes. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and swing with the rapier. Okay. That's gonna be point three. That hits. All right. It's gonna be nine point slashing damage. <clears throat> gonna come with the scimitar. That's eighteen. That hits. All right. That's nine points slashing damage. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. Since we clarified, 
take one additional action on top of your regular action. That's a possible bonus action. My second attack's a bonus action, right? <laughs> yes, it is. So, uh, walk me through this action surge. So... There would be I, three attacks total. Okay, that's all I'm making sure. It seems weird. Because I attack once, attack a second, and the bonus action would be... Okay, so I'm going to use action so Your surge. action surge is like a separate, like, it's okay. like just taking another yeah. turn. All right, yeah. but, two, it's only, but it's only one attack. That's what we clarified. One attack. Right. All right, so I'm going to use attacks, action surge. Two attacks, two attacks with your rapier, one attack with your short sword. All right, so we're going back to the rapier. Give me, give me. <laughs> that's a 20. That hits. That's going to be... Oh. Four point slash damage. I regret not. Okay. Hell no. How is four with your gone. modifier? Well, the modifier is a three, and I rolled a one with a D eight. Oh. <laughs> that's a shitty oh. roll, but that's a real roll I did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You slash your sword into it three times, uh, raking sort of across its teeth. You happen to hit uh, over the open wound where the missing teeth uh, that the lizard folk were able to recover uh, came from. And this enrages a thousand teeth that devour. Great. So that he snaps his head quickly in your direction, uh, Gilfin, with All a right. bite attack. Okay. So, uh, it does a 23 hit. Yes. You take 15 points of piercing damage. Um, all right. It is <clears throat> just as uh, you are uh, snapped into the jaws of Thousand Teeth, d the Devourer, that two giant constrictor snakes uh, drop from the tree line above, um, just behind Elder Green. I'm sorry, they, s they drop... Uh, they drop 120 feet behind Elder Green. They've been chasing you uh, through your journey uh, since you left uh, the, the druid encounter with the Treant. Mm. And, uh, but they're not being um, subtle about their approach. They're giant and they've fallen um, heavily to the ground so that you're, you all can hear them. Uh, and they slither their way 60 feet uh, towards Elder Green. So they're now... Um, 60 feet behind you, sir. <clears throat> okay, oh, oh, no. Uh, the tree ant uh, turns its gaze into their direction. And then he kind of reaches his tree-like arm into the ground. And he pulls up um, a collection of rocks and dirt and sort of clumps them together like he's making a snowball. And uh -huh. hurls them at the two giant constrictor snakes. So, it's a plus 10 to hit. That's a natural 20, so that's a critical hit on the giant constrictor snakes. Um, Get him, Woody. That giant clump of tree does 28 damage on a normal hit, uh, so it's 56 damage, and it oh just, that clump of rock and earth just crushes one of those giant constrictors uh, smushed on its head and its guts just kind of burst out while the other one continues a race, racing towards Elder Green. Uh, whose turn it now is? Okay, so Elder Green is going to, um, very surprisingly, um, run in front of uh, Brother Blackthorn. <laughs> what? <laughs> no! And he, and he is going to... Um, Say, get back, brother. And um, he is going to uh, hold his hands in front of him, and he's going to say, I open a rift to the space between and call upon the power of Azathoth. And, um, oh, shit. <laughs> Elder Green duplicates himself, and Whoa. there are now four of them. Whoa! <laughs> okay. There are four, um, four Elder Green? Yes. Oh, so goodness. as a... Bonus action, Elder Green casts Mirror Image and replicates himself. Okay. And um, as a bonus action, he is going to cast Healing Word on Jack and Bo. Oh. Sweet. So you are going to get... How can you do that? Wait, it's one bonus it's a action. bonus action. So your action it's is to cast the Mirror Image, right? Oh, no, it's oh, not a cantrip. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry, it's not a cantrip. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. So yeah, I can't do that because it's not a cantrip. So, but, uh, okay. but I do cast um, mirror oh, image. Oops. So now there's four of me. Okay. The Eldritch Blast. Um, oh no, no, that's an action. That's an action. No, that's an action. And sorry, mirror sorry. Image collect. I'm I'm sorry. I messed up. I don't know why. It's okay. I was a you always think so epic. Yeah, so faster. So what bonus cantrips do you, uh, action cantrips do you have, if any? I don't have any bonus action ones, I guess. I was th trying to think of what I had that was a bonus action spell. That's the only one. Oh, I see. Okay. So the healing yeah. word is your bonus action. That That's the only bonus cast. action spell I have. But and I your mirror image is a, as a full action? Yeah. So you can still... So, hold on a second. You can s still cast that mirror, uh, that healing word, right? No, it has to be a cantrip. You can't cast two spells at the same time. Oh, it's not a cantrip. It's a second level no. spell, isn't it? Yeah, that's or something like that. First level. Yeah. Shove a first healing level spell. potion okay. in his mouth. That that's that's an action. Um, but I would allow you to do that as a bonus action. Throw it towards him as a ranged attack if you wanted to do that. You don't have to do okay. that because I've got something. I've got all the take. I know. Right. Okay. Okay then. Yeah, then I'm then just we're okay cast with the mirror image, image right? I guess there are now four elder image. greens. Okay. Yes. This is interesting. Uh, Jacopo, it's your turn. Uh, you've um, just seen this happen. Oh, there's I'm, four of them now. I'm gonna use the distraction that he's just called to, to try and put distance between me and the crocodile. I want to put. Uh, I want to move back about ten feet, and um, I want to cast Hunter's Mark. Oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus my ire on first. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my bonus action to focus my ire on this fucker. Okay. And I'm gonna take one shot. Okay. And it's gonna be sixteen plus eight to hit. That hits. Uh, so this is gonna be two d six. And that is eight. eleven damage to him. All right. <clears throat> and that'll be the end of my turn and mark down my ammo. Okay. All right, at the end of your turn, um, he lunges from in front of Gilfin, um, right af chasing after you, that, that 10 feet that you move, he closes that distance. Right. <clears throat> and then it's his turn. So he's going to make a bite attack against you, uh, Jacopo. Okay. Um, that's a 23 to hit. Mm -hmm. That's going to be 15 piercing damage. Okay. And then just like before, he's going to pivot his body. This time his tail is going to sort of lash. He's going to kick his feet off the ground, even though he's a gigantic, monstrous crocodile. He's going to make a tail attack. That's going to be a 15 to hit. Nope. It's all kind of like the same thing. These bites are coming down and they're getting me, but I'm just managing to stay out of his throat. And I uh, and then fall to the ground and once again try to dodge the, the tail in the same manner. If only this time maybe I'd, I'd scurry over it rather than under it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gilfin, it's your turn. Uh, I'm not doing well, boys. So how close is the creature? Uh, He's 30 feet away from me. I'm gonna move the 30 feet. I'm no more. Move the 30 feet, try to find a soft spot. I know he's got the scales, but maybe around his belly or something, you know. Okay. Attacking first with the rapier. Okay. Natural one. Coming back with the scimitar. Damn. That's Do we have any inspirations? Uh, Gilpin has an inspiration. Okay, well, I just rolled a three, so I'm going to have to use the inspiration. Can I roll the okay. rapier with inspiration? Then? So the yes. scimitar, I rolled a one, then I rolled a three. I'm going to re-roll the rapier. That's another natural one. Uh, oh, my God. That's what it is. The uh, remaining giant constrictor sort of closes the rest of the distance and rears before the treant, ready to sort of encircle him and constrict the remaining life out of the the tree. Uh, the one-armed tree kind of responds uh, back by clubbing its last uh, remaining arm against the snake. So let's see if that hits. Tree in. Yeah, that's a plus 10, so that hits. And let's 
see how much damage that does. Alright, 16. He sort of uh, punches the snake in the face and kind of rocks it. Um, now it's Elder Green's turn. So you've got uh, your mirror imaged. Yes, and the uh, thousand teeth ran past me, right? Uh, yes, uh, went by you chasing after Jacopo. This upsets Elder Green. Your, your and, mirror image um, did not deter him. <laughs> all four of my mirror images are not happy. So, um, <laughs> Elder Green is going to uh, say, uh, I entreat the mercy of the mother of a thousand young to, um, El or to Jacobo and cast Healing Word as a bonus action. Okay. You are going to regain eight hit points, Jack. Thanks. And he is going to uh, pull out Henry and um, as a free action and climb up onto the uh, top of the Thousand Teeth. Okay. Uh, so him kinda... and all four of his mirror images, obviously. Yeah, so they all kind and of then... uh, follow in a line up his back leg. And then as an action, I would like to cast uh, Eldritch Blast. <laughs> all right. Natural 20! Uh, that hits. Okay. So, let me see. So, my question is, do I add my attack bonus to the second roll as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought it's just one. Yeah, you know, you only add it once. Yeah, you double your damage dice and add the bonus once. Oh. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I then I will deal 22 damage. <gasps> okay. Oh, my. Who's cheering in the background? What the fuck? No, uh, they're having yeah, that one. No, they were cheering the natural 20. Don't ruin it. They were, They're excited. Yeah. They're so excited. So Elder Green sort of uh, lasts a thousand teeth, and uh, 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 you're standing on um, sort of its hind, uh, sort of its back hips. And where do you blast it on its body? I'm firing straight towards its ugly face. Towards its face. Okay. So yeah, you kind of like, you kind of like blast its uh, snout like off of it. Um, so where its front teeth uh, are no longer a threat, although there's still a giant mouth to contend with. Um, and it sort of okay. snaps that mouth um, back over its back shoulder at you, Elmarine. Okay. And Elder Green is going to say, We're up here, you thousand tooth son of a bitch. <laughs> now, does that mirror image impose like any sort of disadvantage or anything? Yes. Like uh, okay. It doesn't know which one is me, so when okay. you roll, I'm going to roll a d20, and that will decide which, who it targets, basically. Okay, I got you. Okay. So, alright, so I got to roll against your AC first. Yes. To see if you all hit. Alright, all right, let's well, see if I hit that. Actually, Yeah, so just roll to see if you hit. Okay, I'll let you... see if I hit. All right, um, I rolled a 22 to hit. Well, then it's going to hit. And now I roll to see if you hit me or a duplicate, and you hit a duplicate. It is immediately destroyed. All right, okay, cool. That's awesome. Hey, <laughs> <So, laughs> that was me. Um, all right, so, that's, um, that, so that was a uh, legendary action at the end of Green's turn. So now it's uh, Jack and Poe's turn. I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna light this thing up. I'm gonna use both my attack and my bonus action to use another attack with this hand crossbow on this thing. And just light him up. Okay. Um, now is your first, is your main crossbow two-handed? Main crossbow is two-handed. This is a. It is. This is a. So you want to use my so hand crossbow? I've been using the whole time. Oh, oh, you, oh, that's always been a hand crossbow. No, no, my first one, Cherry, is yeah. a, light, a light crossbow. And is that two-handed? Yes. So what I'm getting at is is that you're going to go from your two-handed crossbow with your main action and then take a bonus action to use your hand crossbow? No, at the beginning of this match, I said I'm using Cherry 2000. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's, That's what I'm trying my, to figure out. I've had, I've had that out the whole time. I, got, I think you got I've, that built, like, what, back in one of our earlier games and stuff, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've been... I've been using that as like a. I used it in the last battle as like a quick draw thing, 
But, so I'm just, uh, wanna, this... I'm just wondering, have you been using them both at the same time? Not this fight. Or, 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 or the last the last fight, I put Cherry down and pulled the, uh, pulled the other one out. But this okay. fight, I start, I've been rolling D6s this whole time. Okay, okay. Because I've been, I've been using the hand cross, though. So. I'm just trying to make sure I understand what you're doing. Yes. I roll an 11. It's going to be 18 for a hit. So this is your bonus action. This is a uh, first attack. Oh, this is your first attack. I'm sorry. I thought you said it was going to be a bonus action. Uh, yeah, I'm that gonna hits. Use, I'm going to use my bonus attack to try and hit him the second time. Oh, I see. But, um, okay. uh, the first attack is eight. That does not hit. No, no. I, I rolled an eight. Oh, that's eight hit. damage. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, eight, eight, damage. Eight, eight damage. Now I'm going to try to attempt a bonus action to uh, shoot him again with the hand crossbow. Okay. And I roll a 13 plus 8. That's 22. That hits. Think. And here it comes. Oh, this time there's not a second D6 because that IR only puts on one turn. So, okay, this one is going to be 9 damage. All right. All right. Mark my, mark my ammo down here. Now it's Thousand Teeth's turn. Um, your your uh, hand crossbow bolts sort of. Uh, just embed themselves in that gaping wound at the end of its snout from where Elder Green chunk, blew chunk. The, the end of it, the top of its snout off. And mm -hmm. it just swishes its head uh, back to you. Okay. Alright, so it's going to make a, a bite attack at you. And that's an 18 to hit. The hits. Alright, you're going to take 15 damage there. Okay. And then it's going to swipe its tail around and it, and Gilfin, this it's gonna try and it's gonna sweep its body is so large, it's gonna sweep its tail actually at you because it still recognizes you as a friend. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Elder Green, you're still on its back, right? By its hind legs? It's up towards its head, maybe? Elder Green was kind of on its back hips, if I remember, right? You crawled up its back leg. I just climbed up it from where I was, so yeah, yeah. it would be more. Than that. Yeah, it's gonna swish its tail back at you because you blew its snout off. Um, so you still got three mirror images left, right? Uh, two left. Two left. There's okay, three, I'm sorry. There's three targets. There's three of you. Yeah. One, yeah. Okay, three targets. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the the, the, the hit with the tail. Uh, that's an eight. So I don't even think that hits, right? That doesn't hit any of us. Okay, so we don't and, have to worry uh, about it. Elder Green is going to laugh, and it's going to echo across all three of them. Okay. <laughs> Um, Gilfin, it's your turn. He's unnerved by Elder Green's laugh, but he's impressed with his um, alligator writing. Uh, I'm still close to the stomach. Has the uh, creature moved any? Uh, no, it hasn't. All right, well, then I'm going to swipe away with the rapier. Okay. 18. And you find that soft underbelly that you were looking for earlier. Go ahead and roll the damage. 11 points slashing damage. And what does that look like to finish well, off Thousand Teeth, the oh, Devourer? Really? Uh, yes. Great! I, uh, I just, I kind of plunge the rapier in there as far as I can, and I, I go even, my whole arm goes in. Uh, and kind of just move it around, cutting in like to any kind of heart or organs I can get into. Yes, and yeah, your, your hand is, it, the heart is bigger than your hand. Yeah, and all that gunk is starting to come out out of his pores and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm getting blood sprayed all over my face and shit. I'm like, hit it! Hit it, Elder Green! Because I don't know it's dead. I'm like, hit it! Yes, hit the it. rotten filth of his last meals are spilling out because its primitive digestive system is millions of years old and, uh, it, it just lets food rot inside of its stomach for for uh, decades of its life. Ew. <laughs> but he has no clue because it's so large that he's, he's been able to stop it team stopped it. He's going to probably attack with the uh, scimitar also. You know, just stab that in the other side. Keeps on okay. going. Yeah, he don't know. He just keeps swinging at this point. And the, the giant mass that was Thousand Teeth the Devourer just sags as its organs are pulverized by your attacks. Its massive uh, body, which already sort of just slides along the ground, uh, just collapses in a, in a heap um, that seems insurmountable to everybody but the tree hand at this point. And now we all get eaten by a snake. <laughs> um, no, as you, as you, as you finish <laughs> off uh, uh, the devourer, uh, the tree ant finishes off the snake. 
he sort of pummels its head into the ground uh, and ends the threat from the snake as well. Oh, you make quick work of Thousand Teeth the Devourer. The people of these lands will be grateful that this menace has ended. I kind of like already am trying to like suture one of my wounds, gaping wounds, shut with some like thread. And I go, ah, you know, gator's a gator. Bigger they are, the harder they small. Uh, uh, fall. Uh, I can't even talk. I think I've lost a lot of blood. Uh, <laughs> Elder Green. The bigger they are, the harder they small. <laughs> Elder oh, Green sure is going. Oh, the Elder Greens from the back of the uh, Thousand Teeth are going to run all the way to the front and jump off of his face down to yeah. Jacobo. And they're going to say, Leather Blackthorn, we were so worried. Are you okay? And it's going to echo across all three of them. I think I am. Uh, I think I'm uh, getting woozy. I see. I see three of three of you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. And he's going to um, dispel the other two, which vanish in a shriek of pain. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm. I'm definitely. I've lost a lot. Of blood. Nah, a bit. Of, a bit of rest. I'd take a tooth for a trophy, but uh, Christ, one of those things is as big as me. You find that the ones, um, there are several available from the wound, the snout that was blown off. So you can harvest, you know, easily two dozen of those foot long magical teeth um, that the lizard folk could use to make spears for their war against the Sahuagin. We better do that then. <clears throat> I'll just sit here and, uh, Maybe eat a good barrier too while you guys pull those out. Here's a hammer. <laughs> yeah, with the help of the tree ant, uh, he's able to easily extract them for you, and he gets Sweet. he sort of gathers twenty four of the uh, the foot long teeth uh, from a thousand uh, a thousand teeth <laughs> the devourer into your bag of holding. That went about exactly as planned, huh, Jack Bull? Well, yeah, probably. Uh, you know, I, I, sh I fought a gator like that once when I was toddling, and uh, you know, it was a very similar fight. Only, um, you know, he didn't bite half my arm off that time. Uh, you both fought well. It was an honor. So did you, mate. So did you. Uh, that stuff that came out of his mouth over there has made me feel a bit sick to my stomach. Maybe we can get out of here. You think uh, we can get this int to the join with the uh, the lizard folk? The tree ant, um, he offers to bring the carcass of a thousand back to the lizard folk lair, um, but then he uh, says he'll go on his way. Your people aren't being harassed by the uh, the danger coming from the sea? There are a few of our people left in the marshes, but I can't bring myself to leave them. This has been my home all a long time. They're trees, Gilfin. They get harassed by termites. I think we should just leave them out here. I've seen the lizard people come, and I've seen the other people come, and the other people go, and the lizard people and the land people fight their wars. And mm. the sea people fight their wars. And sometimes the land people fight the sea people wars. <laughs> Oh, what? Are we... Blood loss. You, f you passed out. His voice is so soothing. Well, it's very nice of him <laughs> to help us return this. We can have a big old feast. He'll also drag the uh, constrictor snake carcasses um, so, along with the, uh, uh, the carcass do we, uh, of uh, Thousand Teeth of Devourer. What do you know about these creatures, Jack Boy? Are they anything like I hear dragons are with the... Having stuff in their uh, their den. There's just to be more shit. I know. Uh, I know their tails are really good when you fry them up. Yeah, but do they keep treasure? Alligators. What need would a god have for treasure? Why do dragons collect treasure? The only treasure I've dragons ever found in a the gods. only treasure I've ever found in a gator hole was a mound of leather. You would have seen. Um... You would have seen the um, the discarded and, and rusted um, you can go poke scraps of uh, swords and spears and things um, uh, floating around the uh, the shoreline of the uh, the muck uh, fetid river and uh, 
rivulet that fed into the river. Um, it's all choked with the the, the uh, scraps of the dead. So um, you would have seen some weapons and armor. Yeah. We don't need to check the cave. Probably just some alligator eggs in there or something. You can go look, mate. Maybe there's a big old egg in there, and we'll have that for breakfast. Go in there and check. Yeah, just take. So you're gonna kind of uh, you're gonna kind of swim across there. Yeah, I got the mariner's armor on. Um, as you get into the pool, it's sort of uh, the 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 water is sort of is is choking, uh, and uh, disgusting. I'll go ahead and make a Constitution save. Hey, hey, hey. he's going to get leeches. <laughs> Sixteen. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You, you feel it's a, your... is it? It's a save, right? That's a save. Yeah. Okay, so that's plus five. So I rolled a thirteen. That's an eighteen. Okay, yeah, so you feel sick to your stomach and immediately vomit the water back out, uh, but don't feel any other effects. Well, I should have activated that helmet. Lessons learned. Careful, Mike, um, there's weird shit in these swamps. You swim right up your dick out. Uh, you find all kinds of uh, you, feeling around. Uh, the, the pool is eight feet deep, but even just feeling around, you can feel all sorts of bones. Uh, there's all manner of uh, rotten leather, um, uh, rusted metal. Um, everywhere, but nothing of value. Well, on the way out, I will activate the uh, helm of underwater action, which causes a bubble to go around my head. The uh, the the command word is Jack Draw. Okay. <laughs> so that way, I don't breathe any of the water going back to join the okay. fellows. Okay. Yeah, you get back uh, safely. Yeah, lots of treasure in there, but I can't carry it all. Really. No, not really, no, not really. No, no, not really. I told you, mate. You know I Gator can't holds. lie. You know I can't Gator lie. Holds a nasty. Gator holds a gross, but I, I would expect nothing less of you. Uh, so, uh, do you all uh, return to the? Uh... Yep, we'll uh, okay. take this back to the lizard folk. Yeah. So yeah, the the uh, the tree ant follows in your wake all the way to the lizard folk lair, and uh, you reach. Uh, through uh, through Jacopo's expert guidance, you reach back to the lair at the setting of the sun, where you're welcome back to genuinely as heroes. Uh, the lizard folk that didn't love you already, the shamans who gave you the evil eye, um, now have your complete respect. Um, they take the meat from the uh, constrictor snakes and from Thousand Teeth and just turn it into a feast that these people really needed because they're considered uh, refugees from their own real homelands. Um, and uh, the, even though the, the Koalin have uh, seem to have left the coalition, they're not they're no longer at the lizard folk lair. Uh, but the merfolk and uh, the Lokatha all agree to uh, to join a coalition with Salt Marsh, um, and they all draft sort of uh, the official letters and documents um, to send back with you. And the lizard folk agree to send emissaries back with you to to Salt Marsh, um, so where you will be uh, considered as heroes. That's wonderful. I'll say that during that time, Jacobo will spend most of the evening trying to help them roast the the parts of the of the gator tail and and give, try to really take charge of the culinary actions that 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 and the seasonings that must go on. <laughs> yeah, it's really a party. And Elder Green, you find that uh, some of your are actually starting to convert um, the shamans who are holdouts. Um, there are three shamans that are seem to be listening intently to the five uh, converts that you have to your <laughs> spreading like wildfire. You think Elder Green enhanced the story? Any? It's always good to enhance I'm... a story when you tell it. I'm going to go up to them and I'm going to say, "Your God was nothing compared to the power of mine." <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're all definitely interested, and they're kind of like get into like. Uh, uh, theological good. debate with you and Draconic there, uh, but they seem to be more interested in what you have to say than, than defending their own ideas. So, Gilfin gets him a nice big glass of green ale. Jack, will you ever eat a god? I will tonight, Mike, and I get a glass of that green stuff, too. We're moving up in life. There we are, and it's uh, saying something, because I'm only three and a half feet tall. So, um, so this is where we'll pick up uh, uh, next in, uh, time we, we meet up on your return to Salt Marsh and then uh, what happens from, from there. So um, yeah, great job, guys. Okay. The hunt for a thousand teeth of devour.
Thank you, uh, DM. That was really fun. Thank you yeah, for cool. putting that together. That was excellent. Yeah, of course.